hurricane season doesn't stop for a pandemic, and neither do we. Get the information you need to stay safe every day, right here on the Weather Channel. We'll look at travel and focus on the I-10 corridor. We've already seen a few showers this morning. Just the broad circulation that we have across the south and the Gulf of Mexico here. Wouldn't necessarily say it's the bands, uh, the outer bands yet from Delta, but certainly we're getting, you know, some showers in that outer reaches of the circulation, and we are going to find that on the increase through today. We will get into those outer bands, bringing with the threat of heavy rainfall, as well as the threat for severe weather. Anytime you have a landfalling tropical system, you've got the threat of tornadoes, and that's going to be with us starting tonight. All right, so today, a couple of showers early on. Even Houston, we're getting a few showers. We'll get a few more. This is going to be an expanding big circulation, if you will, um, as we look at Delta approaching the coast. Now, tomorrow morning, we're going to start to not just get into some of the heavier rainfall, but also an increase of winds with tropical storm force conditions. So urging everyone to get all their preparations done today. I-10 travel here into the New Orleans area, I-12 as well. We've got to look at some scattered showers on the increase by this evening. Certainly this afternoon evening, there'll be more activity across this area. Now, yesterday we spoke to the Lake Charles mayor as another storm heads towards his city. We have a little over 6,000 people that are still uh, displaced outside of Lake Charles, and a lot of them are in New Orleans, Baton Rouge, and God, my heart goes out to them, and I am praying for them because uh, they're watching the Weather Channel just like we are, and I can't imagine those emotions going through their minds of having to evacuate uh, and, and escape one storm, and now there's another one on their way. So think about this, 6,000 people displaced. Our hearts go out to them too, by the way, Mr. Mayor. Uh, they're maybe just starting the repairs on the inside of their home, uh, got a tarp on the roof, hoping that they can finish the inside. Then once the roofers get around, they can get the roofs done. Now you potentially face dealing with hurricane mornings and hurricane type gusts. Not not good. Uh, all right, guys, homes and businesses obviously still recovering and rebuilding in the area. Tarps, thousands of them, literally, you know, seen from the sky and ply, uh, plywood, obviously, boarded windows here. Just litter the neighborhoods. And this is from Laura. This isn't even from, the, you know, the hurricane, but that's just going to enhance that, obviously. But now we have a storm that may, if it stays on current track, come in within 15 miles of where Laura came in. 15 miles. I want to bring in Tevin Wooten, who's in New Orleans, and Stephanie Abrams, who is in Vermilion Parish this morning, to talk about these things and some of the similarities and differences between Delta and Laura, especially when they come in so close. Tevin, let's start with you. Uh, first of all, it looks like this Delta is going to come in from a little different angle, right? Yeah, yeah, exactly right, Jim. It's uh, the devil's in the details. The angle of approach. Though uh, seemingly similar, it's actually different because if you think about Laura, that storm had origins from the southeast uh, through Cuba and the Caribbean. Yeah. But Delta sort of did as well. But overall, if you look at this track, about 15 miles is all that separates Laura's landfall from the forecasted track of Delta in terms of its center if it were to go this direction. Uh, 15 miles, you could hop in the car and drive that in a matter of minutes. And that's how close these two tracks are. But, Steph, there are some atmosphere conditions that are a bit different, too. I mean, the sea surface temperatures are different. The upper level yeah. pattern in the steering flow, it's also different, too. Absolutely. And by the way, this has happened, happened before in Florida. Go back to 2004, Hurricane, uh, Hurricanes Jean and Francis made landfall about two miles away from each other. So this isn't, you know, unprecedented. But, you know, let's talk about that. And, um, you know, Cantori, the wind field and what it's doing with, you know, Laura right. versus with Delta and the size of it and the strength of it. Yeah, so the dissimilar part is the atmosphere. And the and the and the uh, Gulf temperatures, right? We know this is not going to be intensifying upon landfall. It's a, it's a different animal coming in here. But similarly are the tropical storm force winds. Look at how far they extend out. The hurricane force winds are going to be much different because we have a weaker storm and delta coming on through. But think about that. You've got a tremendous push of water coming in, so there will still be a storm surge component well east of the center well east of the center, all the way over to the Florida Panhandle. So those beaches that have been weakened, guys, uh, are more than likely going to get it again. So let's put up, let's put up, Tevin, the similarities and the differences between Laura and Delta here and explain what they mean. Yeah, if you were to go line by line here, of course, you have the forecast and the approach. Laura came in from the south. Delta looking like 
maybe a slight nudge toward the south and west. Uh, but Steph, what about the rapid intensification? That's a term or a phrase that we've right. heard a lot in 2020. This is sort of different. It is different, but you know, as it's coming ashore, you still potentially could have a GATT at Category 2. And so I don't want people to be like, oh, it's mm -hmm. not a Category 4, it's a Category 2 with winds maybe 100 miles an hour. If you're in the eye wall of this Category 2, you will see damage. And even if you're outside of that, like where we are on the east side, that push of water could be problematic with the flooding. So there are different components to this. It's not just about comparing it to Laura and it's a Cat 2 versus Cat 4. You have to remember, guys, that we are going to see rainfall with this as well. So, of course, we are going to continue to break down all the different details of this hurricane and how it will be affecting you. And we have a huge team out here, live team coverage for you around the clock on Sirius XM and also uh, on Snapchat, too, by the way. When your cameras roll. So this is something nobody can imagine. Our experts react. What do you do? Oh my gosh. Jaw dropping. Nope, nope, nope. All the way back home. It doesn't get better than this. Don't miss all new episodes of Weather Gone Viral, Sunday nights at 9, here on the Weather Channel. Get your daily dose of everything weather. Wow. Boy, do we have a lot to talk about. Weather Today from the Weather Channel. New episodes every day, only on Quibi. Hey, good morning, everyone, from Bro Bridge, Louisiana, the crawfish capital of the world here in St. Martin Parish. Uh, as uh, things are obviously well underway here, folks are out and about. It's a city of about 10,000 people, 8, 10,000 people here. Uh, and, of course, we've already been hindered, if you will, by this tropical season by many tropical systems, especially Laura. When you look at agriculture alone in Louisiana, $1.6 billion in damage, especially heavy to the timber industry, the cattle industry. Sugar cane is a big deal here. As a matter of fact, many of the farmers trying to rush to harvest their crop ahead of Delta. Uh, let's tell you what we know this morning as we kind of reset you here. <coughs> Excuse me at the bottom of the hour. Mandatory evacuations for all parts of Calcasieu, Cameron, Iberia, Vermilion Parishes. That's where Steph is this morning, uh, including the city of Lake Charles. Can you believe that? Even on the west side of a hurricane here, Lake Charles, if that's in fact where it goes, the tarps and the damage that's already been done from Laura is going to be awful when we bring in gusts up to 75 or more miles an hour. We have hurricane warnings out for Lake Charles, Louisiana. 56 oil platforms and one rig in the Gulf of Mexico evacuated again. And Saturday's LSU-Missouri game uh, has been switched from Baton Rouge up to Columbia in order to get out of the way of Delta's path. So a lot of maneuvering going on and through here. And think about that. If you're one of the 6,000 victims that has left Lake Charles and is waiting for your home to get livable again, now you, many of you here that are in Bro Bridge or Lafayette or even over in New Orleans near, where Tevin is, having to watch this happen again. So just an awful situation, no question about it. And we will be covering that story uh, from the Lake Charles angle, okay? Like Steph, like Steph mentioned, it's happened before. We can get landfalls close to each other. But the type of damage that we had in Lake Charles and the waiting to get even new roofs could cause even more problems in through here. I mean, which, what do you claim it for? Which hurricane? Uh, so let's get you up to date on what's happening here. 100 mile an hour hurricane, 970 millibars is the pressure. The hurricane hunters have been out there. They've even found lower pressures. So this thing is trying to intensify. A lot of times you'll see the pressure go down and the corresponding wind field will go up, but there's a little lag sometimes in that intensity. Sometimes there's not when it's rapidly developing, and that's not the case at least yet. Concurrent missions from the Hurricane Hunters, all right, the uh, 53rd Squadron out of Biloxi who have moved to San Antonio, and the NOAA Hurricane Hunters out of Lakeland, Florida. So concurrent missions going on there. Hurricane warnings posted, as I mentioned, Lake Charles, Lafayette, uh, Bro Bridge, which is where we are, Morgan City, New Iberia, up toward Alexandria. And look at the widespread amount of surge we're expecting. Granted, it's not expected to be as high as what we had with Laura, because it's not as big a hurricane, but, or strong a hurricane, I should say it in that way, but it's, look at how far reaching it is, even over to the Florida Panhandle again. And for those beaches that have been weakened already and don't have any dunes, any beach left, the wave run up there could easily exacerbate any existing problems that go on. All right, so Steph's in uh, Del Cambre. She is down uh, in Louisiana in uh, Vermilion Parish. And I'm sure I said that wrong again, Steph. I, I just want to say it's Vermilion Parish because it's easier to do it that way. So give us the correct, correct pronunciation I know, you know, there. 
So what's interesting, Jim, that, that you brought this up, because yesterday, <laughs> of course, got here and was like, okay, how do we Delca. say it? I looked online Delca. and they pronounced it Del Cambre. We spoke to the locals. The locals say Delca. So I'm going to go with the locals so that I can ah, fit in Delca, and not upset right. people here. They're, yes. Right? So we're going to go with Delco. <laughs> Good call. So we're right. actually in yeah, Vermilion and uh, Iberia. Uh, it sits right on the border of those two parishes. And this area could see flooding, that water rise, because we have the Delcom Canal right behind us. It goes down to Vermilion Bay and right out to the Gulf of Mexico. Being on the east side of this system, you're going to see that onshore push of water. Now, exactly how high that gets and where it gets to its highest point is going to depend on how big the system gets, how strong it is, and where it makes landfall. And that all is determined by high pressure off to our east and a trough off to our west. So those two systems are steering, pushing, and pulling this right into shore. We expect this to go up to a Category 3 and then come in as a Category 2. And a lot of people go, oh, it's just a Category 2. But I'll tell you, if you're in the eye wall of a Category 2, you will get damage. We're expecting power outages um, into New Iberia and also here in Adelcom. And again, that water rise, that what is what we think will be the biggest issue. We've been talking to a lot of locals. Rita, they got nailed by the water here. They said in this area, um, up to 10 feet in some spots. It was just outrageous how high the water got. But with that trough coming in from the west, that could slow down the strength of this system. And that will be the saving grace. But again, you're still going to get that onshore push, whether this is a Cat 2, a Cat 3. You have a counterclockwise flow, so the winds on the right-hand side are coming onshore, and the whole system is moving. So that's why the right-hand side is worse than the left-hand side, the left -hand side, because you have the winds of the hurricane and that forward movement as well. Don't forget, you can always listen to us on Sirius XM, uh, our hurricane coverage there of Delta. It is XM Digital Channel 271. We have that straight through Saturday. Trusted TV News Network. We've got a severe weather threat. Winds have been gusting the full force of this thing. area of southwestern or south central Louisiana. This Walmart store here is preparing to close down at 10 o'clock this morning so staff members can prepare themselves to get out of harm's way. Most of the homes and businesses in the area are still damaged. They've got blue tarps covering, covering some of the roofs. Trees still have to be uh, brought down uh, or cut down rather by uh, uh, chainsaws and what have you. But it may be the winds from now Delta that bring some of these trees down on the west side of the system or perhaps the center of the system, depending on the exact track. Welcome back to AMHQ. I'm meteorologist Tevin Wooten. We're live for you in New Orleans, Louisiana, where behind me we have overcast skies. The moisture is swinging on in here with the low level jet. One or two sprinkles as well uh, on the way. But overall, we should miss the worst of Delta, but still seeing some significant impact here by way of storm surge if you're along Lake Pontchartrain and also a flash flood threat as well, depending on how some of the heaviest rainfall bands do set up. But we want to talk about the rainfall we're anticipating later on today with your travel forecast along I-10 and I-49. This is where we start to see uh, the weather get a bit worse today and into tonight. And you see that red zone? I want to draw your attention to that because that is the threat of severe weather today that increases tomorrow where it's not just severe thunder storms with winds beyond 58 or 60 miles an hour, it's also that chance of a tornado or a water spout, depending on where you are and how some of the strongest cells uh, work their way in off the shore there. So as you can see, we, th we put the radar into motion here. This is later on today. Notice how the moisture still continues to swing in, but also becomes a bit more widespread in coverage. And then by overnight tonight and through the wee hours of tomorrow morning, this storm is a bit closer and closer. So we are anticipating the weather conditions to go downhill tonight and into Friday. We work our way towards the west here in southwestern Louisiana and eastern Texas, too. We can't forget about our folks, uh, those folks in Orange, Texas, uh, that also saw significant damage from Hurricane Laura. They're now on the way to see uh, some strong wind stuff from Delta, too. So it's important to remember, I know that we say several cities at times, but it's important to remember there are others, too, who saw bad weather from, uh, from Laura. And who will see bad weather from Delta as well? Yeah. Okay, so let's talk about, you know, what some of these cities saw in Laura, what some of these cities have seen in years past that have prepared them for Hurricane Delta. I want to bring in the mayor of New Iberia. Uh, Freddie Decourt is joining us on the phone here. Uh, mayor, thank you for being with us this morning. First, let's talk about what kind of flooding did New Iberia in this area see due to Hurricane Laura? Laura wasn't that bad. We, uh, we got lucky on Laura, but in the past, we have had quite a lot of flooding. 
We are always very concerned about the title surge. So, uh, you know, we're preparing. Yeah. I know, Rita, you guys got devastated by the flooding. And, you know, Rita made landfall way away from here on the border of Texas and Louisiana. How bad did it get during that hurricane? If you go the Highway 90 on down, so where you are in Delco and all of the outlying areas of the parish and right outside of the city is where it's the worst. We have some low-lying areas in the city, and we are preparing for those that do flood, but the worst is from 90 uh, south. 90 south. Okay, so what do you want the people, I mean, a lot of people have lived here their whole lives. You know, they know what to do, but what is your message to the people of this area? Uh, stay safe. Prepare. If you live in a low-lying area, I would say leave um, because we can't get to you after the winds are at 45 miles per hour. Our first responders can't get out. So, you know, stay safe. Be vigilant. Uh, you know, it's nothing to mess with. We've all lived here our whole lives and, and have ridden out many hurricanes. But uh, you have to be prepared, and the best thing to do is leave. Uh, Mayor, we have about 30 seconds. What about after the storm? What do you want the people to know here? Um, after the storm, uh, just that our, we know our community comes together and we fix our own problems and don't wait on anybody. But uh, stay safe. And, you know, here in New Iberia, we're here to help. I think the surrounding communities know that. So it's just, uh, you know, what you'll see is our community pull together as yeah. they are in Lake Charles and watch us put ourselves back together. Mayor, 10 seconds. Do you guys, uh, are you opening shelters you plan to? Uh, post storm, we have no shelters now, but post storm, we do uh, operate a shelter okay. and until uh, the state can come in. All right, Mayor, we certainly appreciate it. We'll continue with live team coverage here as a storm nears. Don't forget your lunch. What do you do? Oh my gosh, jaw dropping. Nope, 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 all the way back home. It doesn't get better than this. Don't miss all new episodes of Weather Gone Viral Sunday nights at 9 here on the Weather Channel. Get your daily dose of everything weather. Wow. Boy, do we have a lot to talk about. Weather Today from the Weather Channel. New episodes every day, only on Quibi. Uh, from a weather standpoint, I think the worst of the weather will be through there by game time, so I don't think any players will be at danger. We, we've had discussions, but I think everybody's going to try to you know, make sure we get to play the game on Saturday. Uh, just uh, n nobody's for sure what the best time to do that is. That is the coach you've been hearing. Let's see the words of Alabama coach Nick Saban.
Crimson Tide of Alabama. Welcome back everyone. I'm meteorologist Reynolds Wolf and coming to you from Baton Rouge, Louisiana. If you have any familiarity with college football, you may remember that Coach Nick Saban actually won a national championship back in 2003 here in Baton Rouge with the LSU Tigers. And the reason why I bring that up is LSU has postponed their game or actually moved their game to Columbia, Missouri because of the weather. More on that coming up in a moment. But let's talk about Baton Rouge and the timing of when we can expect conditions to, to change. Right now, we are being treated to beautiful skies, but that will be quite a, a contrast to what we see rolling forward in time. In fact, we can expect the storm impacts to really be felt wind-wise, tropical storm force or greater, especially as we make the transition into Friday. And they're going to last into Saturday morning, but Friday afternoon and evening is when we really should get the muscle of the wind. In terms of the rain to come, anywhere from 2 to 3 inches of rainfall, more than enough to cause some problems, possibly some flooding. Meanwhile, in New Orleans, look at this. The story that we have with the winds, very similar in terms of the timing. The strongest of those will be Friday afternoon and into the evening hours of 45 miles per hour or greater. Keep in mind, we mentioned this earlier, we have the taller buildings, especially in places like Canal Street. You can expect the wind to possibly be a bit stronger. So just keep that in mind as we roll forward. The rain, it varies. Now, according to some models, looks like New Orleans could get anywhere from one to two. But remember, storm moving bands on shore, and if this system actually slows down a bit, we could see these numbers change in a very, very big way, possibly with greater amounts. However, if it speeds up, you might see just the opposite. However, you'll notice for now, it looks like the heaviest rainfall should be just, uh, let's see, that would be just the west of the 49 corridor. Now, in terms of Lake Charles, the story there, also a dire one. You see the timing of the wind, 75, 70 miles per hour or greater, mainly Friday afternoon and evening and the rainfall totals there at the time anywhere from five to eight. Again, you might have some hot liars that could be up to maybe 10, even 11 inches, not out of the question. But look at this, the total rain forecast for you. You see the bullseye for now, seven to eight or some of the highest amounts. And uh, again, all that could change. Uh, as we make our way full circle back into the game that we have here in uh, Baton Rouge, again, that has been moved to Columbia, Missouri. And that forecast, although not perfect, is considerably better. Early on in the contest, like to monitor showers are possible. But as we make our way into the mid quarters of the game, and certainly by the latter half, we can anticipate partly cloudy skies that can't be expected. Again, it's the Tigers versus the Tigers just the Louisiana Tigers, uh, LSU Tigers, and the Missouri Tigers. By the way, Jim Cantori, let me tell you, Raging Cajuns and Coastal Carolina also postponing their game to Wednesday on October 14th. Uh, the Cajuns have also had a, a game earlier in the season postponed due to COVID. It's just been that kind of year, Jim. And, you know, it's interesting uh, because we got to talk to Nick Saban last year. I mean, I don't think there's anybody who looks at the weather like like Saban does, with, without question. And, I mean, they're, oh, pra no they're likely practicing with footballs right now. Okay, they're likely pra practicing oh, with like footballs. He, he makes that a part of their deal. Yeah, exactly. All right, uh, Rels, we appreciate that as always. Let's talk a little bit about what we got going on with Delta in through here because the pressure has come down this morning. We've got uh, concurrent flights with both the NOAA Hurricane Hunters and the Air Force Hurricane Hunters. Now, the Air Force Hurricane Hunters, they moved out of Biloxi over to San Antonio. So they've had to come out of a different location. But either way, they're in there uh, literally dissecting this hurricane and giving us the latest data on it, which goes into modeling. It goes into, you know, certainly the the advisories that you see, both the intermediate and the and the main advisory that will come out uh, at 11 o'clock this morning. But pressures have been coming down. So this storm, for all intents and purposes, is on its way to becoming a major hurricane once again, and that is the current forecast from the Hurricane Center. So the rainfall footprint looks extensive. You can see why the games that Reynolds was just talking about were moved. That's a lot of rain. That's a lot of wind coming in, obviously, with that. Uh, regardless of fans or not in the stadiums, that's still a messy day to play playing football, and you don't want to put uh, whether players or even people, obviously, uh, and subject to injury because of that kind of weather coming in. Hurricane the flood watches are posted. Even though it's been dry of late, we've already had a fall cold front through all of this area. Uh, we don't take much rainfall, especially when you have a tropical system coming ashore to saturate the ground and cause some flooding. Now, what's interesting is the same front that's come down is now moving back. And if you see this dock right here, that was covered in Laura. The flooding in Laura wasn't huge, but they definitely saw some. And then you have all these shrimp boats, and it doesn't look like they're moving them. OK, and so everything is uh, tied to their moorings. The question is, how high will the water rise? 
uh, with this storm. And so this is something that we will continue to watch uh, and we will check back with this area as well after the storm. Now, of course, for updates, you can follow us here on the Weather Channel, all of our social media pages, or you can check out Pattern Storm Break on Snapchat. That's another place that you can get uh, some of the video that will be coming into the Weather Channel. Live coverage continues after a short break. Hurricane Delta is currently expected, forecasted, to make landfall as a Category 3 major hurricane in Louisiana on Friday afternoon. That means that by Friday morning, conditions will be deteriorating rapidly. By the end of the day Thursday, you need to be where you intend to be as you ride out the storm, and you need to be postured however you need to be postured. So do all the work. Uh, that you need to do to fortify your position to get ready. Uh, make sure you have your supplies on hand. While the track uh, has shifted a little bit west, it is still true that the overwhelming majority of the coast of Louisiana remains in the cone. And good morning. Welcome to the Weather Channel. I'm meteorologist Stephanie Abrams in Delcom, Louisiana. Coastal Louisiana is about to get hit by a Category 2 hurricane, potentially Category 3. We're going to be watching this as it pulls ashore. Right now, winds are at 100 miles an hour, but it is in the wide open water. We're expecting this hurricane to gain strength in the Gulf of Mexico, get up to a Category 3, and as it's coming ashore, it should be losing strength, and we'll tell you exactly why that is. But I don't want people to say, oh, it might just be a Category 2 at landfall. If you are in the eye wall of a Category 2, you will get significant damage. And then we also have to worry about the water rise. There's clouds, a few showers rotating around the north side of this system here along the Gulf Coast. Uh, you know, it's been actually pretty quiet for us here along the southern Louisiana coast. Maybe a little spit of rain here and there, uh, but nothing too bad just yet. Today is a day to prepare. Now, even if we don't get the eye wall where we are located here in Delcom, Louisiana, you still could lose power you still are going to see that water rise. And that is why we do have the advisories posted. We have those hurricane warnings that include Lake Charles, Lafayette, over towards Morgan City and inland up towards Alexandria as well. And that storm surge warning, the water is going to be, I think, the biggest issue where we are located uh, for the time being. Now, you have to remember, this thing looks like it's going to make landfall in between, say, Lake Charles and where we're located. It could shift a little to the west. It could shift a little bit to the east. And that is going to make or break the type of damage that you see. And then, of course, the rain that's going to come down. Some people seeing a half a foot, potentially up to a foot. That's why we already have those flood advisories that are posted. We are right here on the Delcom Canal. Now, this body of water, it goes right down to Vermilion Bay and then out into the Gulf of Mexico. Some people live on these boats. This first boat here, a smoky. We can see the people up and uh, perhaps having their breakfast. And then there's also some uh, big mass of shrimp boats. Now, the question is, are they going to move these? Well, we spoke to the uh, owner of this boat right here, and he said that he is going to stay for the storm. And Dr. Postel, you can see numerous boats off in the distance. And during Laura, that dock was covered. They said there was some flooding here due to Laura. It wasn't horrific. They did, of course, get nailed with the flooding from Rita. So, you know, Dr. Postel, when we're talking about that forecast, there's such nuances of exactly how big the storm is, what the wind speed is, and exactly where it makes landfall, depending on exactly Exactly how high that water is going to get, but we know it's going to go up. It's going to go up, Stephanie, and it's going to be dangerous with the storm surge and the wind. We know that. I mean, Delta right now, Hurricane Delta, is changing its structure as we speak. It is looks to be getting a little bit bigger and also potentially strengthening uh, right now. There it is over the southern Gulf of Mexico, and the cloud pattern is very obviously kind of expanding, and that's normal uh, with the pulses of convection that we've been seeing this morning. But Hurricane Hunters are in there. This is a NOAA flight showing you that recently in the northern eyewall. They picked up winds around 90 miles per hour and a surface pressure there around 966. So we are going to continue to get that data coming in, and that will give us real-time information on roughly how strong Delta is. The track thinking has remained remarkably consistent. Kudos to the Hurricane Center on this, that uh, really we haven't seen much change in the cone uh, going, you know, from the last couple of cycles and through now. And so what we see is likely a landfall later in the day on Friday as a very significant hurricane and then moving inland from there. So it's going to carry all the hazards of storm surge and destructive winds all the way from the coast well inland. 
The track, again, is pretty well, I wouldn't say set in stone, but it, we are fairly confident of where Hurricane Delta is going because tomorrow morning uh, there's going to be a couple of big features in the atmosphere that aren't going to let this thing wobble too much one way or, or the other. There's the forecast position for tomorrow morning from the Hurricane Center, and there's their track, and here are all the other tracks. And you can see pretty much the guidance is tightly clustered on a landfall, likely somewhere in western Louisiana. And that's where the center of circulation goes. Now, I hear a lot of talk oftentimes like, oh, don't worry about the center. We have to worry about the center because everything else expands outward from that, like the wind patterns, for example. Here's what we think, and this is the radii, the wind radii from the hurricane center, that by middle of the afternoon tomorrow as the hurricane approaches, hurricane force wind gusts excess of 75 miles per hour, likely in the red zone and tropical storm force wind gusts likely in that yellow region that does extend well outside of the track by a good distance, likely over 100 miles from the center. Do expect tropical storm force wind gusts at least for a little while after landfall. And then Delta continues to move inland and carry with it the potential for damaging winds through Louisiana and into parts of Mississippi late on Friday and into Saturday. But hopefully we can see a little bit of a weakening trend right up to landfall. And let's say the final 12 hours to landfall, in part because the water temperatures come down a little bit. They're below average. Now, they're certainly warm enough to support a hurricane, but they're not as potent as they are right now. In fact, that's where Delta is right now, over an area where there's a lot of heat content in the Gulf of Mexico. There's a lot of fuel oceanically to support the kind of storm we have right now. But as it moves northward, it is likely to encounter some cooler waters that are shallower, meaning there's not as much fuel oceanic side of things to support a uh, significant or a major hurricane. It will be a powerful hurricane, no doubt about that, but perhaps we will see that weakening trend as indeed suggested by some of these models. There is the timestamp, and you can see landfall is right about there, let's say Friday late afternoon. But look at what happens. The guidance is telling us that perhaps there is a bit of a weakening trend on the final hours to landfall. Now, it's only a little bit, Jim. You know this, and it's very dangerous still. But this is one thing that perhaps we can all hope for, that maybe uh, it will lose a little bit of its potency on final approach. Back to you, Jim. All right, since you're the doctor, I'm going to defer to you on this one, Dr. Postel. Uh, I'm going to play viewer, and you're going to play doctor right now answering this question. Why haven't I seen an eye? This at one point was a Category 4 hurricane. It's now a developing Cat 2 heading back toward Major. Where is my eye, Doc? It's, Talk to me. It's there, Jim. It was there, in fact. We just couldn't see it. It was obscured a little bit by some cirrus clouds up top. But if you looked underneath the hood and you looked at some of the other satellite images that really looked and dissected the uh, internal structure of Delta, the eye was there prior to making landfall in the Yucatan, and the eye is trying to form right now with convection wrapping all the way around it. I will show those images next time I'm up, I think in a few minutes. But uh, there is an eye there. It just doesn't show up very well in the satellite yeah. pictures because there's a bit of cirrus on top of it, Jim. Right. If we, uh, there's different types of satellite pictures that'll show it very, very well. Mm -hmm. uh, some of the microwave passes have been actually quite nice. Yeah. See, that's why you're the doctor. And I know you can answer it for our viewers because our viewers are asking the very same question. Uh, appreciate that, Posty. Sure. Let's talk about this, guys. The wind is going to be an issue with this because we will see an expanding wind field as the storm uh, comes north, regardless of what type of intensity fluctuations it actually goes through. And really, by the time we roll into Thursday night, we will get into some of these tropical storm force winds along the coast. So uh, will they be more gusty than, you know, specifically sustained? Yes, they will. But by Friday morning, everybody's into it. The I-10 corridor's into it. And then we get into the hurricane itself Friday late afternoon and on into the evening as storm moves north. Now, if it is, in fact, weakening rapidly, it will weaken even more rapid once it makes its way on shore. If it holds steady state, it'll take a moment. But still, you're not talking about bringing a Laura uh, into the Louisiana coast. That is a big problem though, because of where it comes in. Right now, if you just take the advisories at face value, this is only going to go 15 miles east of where Laura came in. And we have hurricane warnings out for Lake Charles. There are literally thousands and thousands of blue tarps on homes in Louisiana as they either wait for 
construction crews to get in there and repair the roof. Some of them have already started repairs inside the home with the tarp on top of the roof because that's going to be slated for later on. But either way, now you're talking about something that could potentially remove or tear or undermine a lot of those tarps. All right. And so this is going to be a, this potentially could be a huge deal for Lake Charles, regardless of strength, regardless of which side of the storm we come in on. Uh, yeah. Storms that come in close together, especially after we dealt with a bona fide cat four is going to be a big problem here. So this is going to be a big, big story and certainly a big part of the story uh, with Delta as it moves ashore uh, tomorrow afternoon and on and towards Saturday. So, Steph, the other part of the story, of course, is going to be the storm surge. Many areas along the coast have already been beaten up. And adding another 7 to 11 feet, you may not need as much surge because we don't have dunes, we don't have marshland, we don't have beaches that can kind of hold back and even dampen the waves and water coming in, right? Yeah, that's something to consider, too. And, you know, here into coastal Louisiana, there are so many canals and bayous and waterways that can push the water up. So that's what we'll be looking for and we think will be one of the biggest issues here um, in Delcom, New Iberia. I know that, you know, the eyewall is looking like it's maybe going towards the Jennings area. So in between here and Lake Charles, they might get the worst winds. But I think that we could lose power here as well. Of course, it all depends on exactly where it makes landfall behind us. You see the shrimp boats there. Um, you know, we're going to check back here after the storm and see how they fared. One of them you can see is already tilted over. We'll make note of that uh, so we know that is not from the storm. Now the other issues we're going to run into will be things like severe weather. So you have to worry about tornadoes as well. Not only the water rise with the bands coming across tornadoes will be an issue as we head into tomorrow, especially on the east side of the storm. That right front quadrant is where you have to worry about really the worst of the weather altogether. So let's talk about how the winds change direction on that right front quadrant. That's what gives you that spin. Remember, the hurricane is going counterclockwise, so you get that southerly flow coming up on the east side of it. And then, um, you know, as you go with height, you're going to see things change. And there's also a friction component that comes into play as well when these storms are coming ashore. So let's talk about, you know, hour by hour when that rain is coming in. Today's the day to make the preparations. And, you know, I don't want to downplay anything if you're not in that eye wall because we could still lose power outside of that eye wall. You've got to have, you know, your flashlight. You've got to be prepared in case the water goes out. You have to always prepare for the worst. So keep that in mind. It's going to rotate in. Things will be going downhill as we head into our Friday. And it looks like it will be making landfall on Friday. That's what we have for our latest predictions. And you have to worry about, um, you know, the tornadoes really throughout it coming ashore. So that's something that you will look for. All right, let's check in with uh, Reynolds Wolf uh, this morning, who I believe is in Baton Rouge, right, Reynolds? Is that where you've ended up? You are correct. Correct, Amundo. You know, Sevi, you were talking about the chance of the rising water, whether it's by surge or whether it's by just torrential rainfall. Either way, it's the story of rising water that causes the biggest threat. By the way, uh, speaking of Baton Rouge and rising water, the worst weather they've ever dealt with here goes back to 2016. The flooding that they had here was just incomprehensible. To this day, people still talk about it. Uh, it's it, the rainfall rates that range anywhere from two to three inches an hour. Get this, folks. You had 7.1 trillion gallons trillion with a T gallons of water that fell during this event. That's enough to fill Lake Pontchartrain nearly four times. Unbelievable. But the flooding we have with this, well, this is all tropical in nature. And again, it is all compliments of Delta. Look at the flash flood watches. We've got those throughout much of Louisiana. But look also into, yes, into Mississippi and even a corner of Arkansas. Meanwhile, uh, we show you the bullseye for it from tomorrow uh, through Saturday morning. Sure, it, it is, is, is it likely? I think it's a certainty. I think it's definitely going to happen in many locations. And then you follow the path itself. And notice as we make our way from Friday into early Saturday morning, Saturday afternoon and evening, even into early Sunday morning, we are still talking about the system making its way through places like Oxford, Mississippi, into Memphis, Tennessee, and perhaps even into North Alabama near Huntsville, Decatur area. Meanwhile, back to the rainfall. Okay, models can, uh, these can certainly change, but right now the way it looks, you see the core of it coming on shore and sure enough affecting much of Louisiana. The highest amounts could be seven to nine, but there could be some outliers. That's always a possibility that if you have some of these bands that come on shore again, if this thing slows down in forward movement, you could see these numbers change in a very, very big way. But the inverse is true. If it's more of a quick mover, you might not see the numbers quite as high. But going forward all the way into your Saturday morning into Sunday, flash flooding still a problem along the spine of the Mississippi River and back up into the heart of bourbon country and into Ohio Valley. Now, 
Now let's make our way back into Alex. He's going to get us up to speed with what we know at this hour. Alex. Indeed. Thanks so much, Reynolds. Uh, some of the headlines when it comes to Hurricane Delta uh, right now. And uh, we start with uh, Delta now, of course, expected to become a major hurricane again by tonight with maximum sustained winds of 115 miles per hour. Governors of Alabama, Mississippi and Louisiana have declared states of emergencies and Calcasieu Parish in Louisiana is under a mandatory evacuation. So again, that's the very latest. Uh, let's get you to that timing here for us again. We're looking at uh, Friday, Friday evening, somewhere in that time frame here that we'll be watching this thing making its way ashore. And again, still a very formidable system that we're going to be dealing with it. Yes, we are anticipating it to be a weakening as it moves on in, but don't let that weakening catch you off guard. This is still going to be a system that we have to pay attention to and then moving its way inland as we work our way through at early part of the weekend. Taking a look at Lake Charles and know these folks don't want to be dealing with anything tropical in nature. Unfortunately, that looks like it's going to be more and more likely the case. This is as we get into Friday morning. You start to see some of the showers, some of the outer bands coming on in and then throughout the afternoon, the rain comes in heavier. The winds start to increase. Of course, right along the coast, we'll be watching for some of the storm surge issues as well. Continuing through our Friday evening, then the main core of the system. There we go overnight into Saturday morning beginning to move on through. So this is what we can expect in Lake Charles. Essentially those gusty winds coming on in at least tropical storm force here for us for our Friday morning into Saturday morning really peaking with the strongest winds looks like as we get into Friday that second part of the day. Well coming up Hurricane Delta won't just bring storm surge destructive winds and heavy rainfall to parts of the Gulf Coast but also the threat for tornadoes. More on the severe threat with the storm that is next. And of course, you can listen to our coverage of Hurricane Delta on Sirius XM digital channel 721, 721 there, straight through Saturday. Most trusted TV news network. We've got a severe weather threat. Winds have been gusting the full force of this thing. The Weather Channel. season doesn't stop for a pandemic and neither do we from this point forward conditions will continue to deteriorate don't let COVID-19 take your eye off the tropics this year's threat is more complex and dangerous than ever before remain vigilant pay close attention to the weather channel no one can cover this historic hurricane season better than the weather channel get the information you need to stay safe every day storm safety in a pandemic all season long right here on the weather channel Hello, America. Welcome back to, to continue coverage here on the Weather Channel. I'm meteorologist Reynolds Wolf, and it is all about Hurricane Delta and what it could mean to our shores. Let's go ahead and run show you the very latest on it, the nuts and bolts. You can see it is sprung free from the Yucatan, now moving out over the expanse of the Gulf of Mexico. Winds of 100 miles per hour. It is a category two. As we take a look at the graphics and show you the, some of the showers, we have had some raindrops in Louisiana, moving into Texas and parts of, of the I-10 corridor. Now, in terms of your tropical storm watches, the tropical storm warnings and the hurricane warnings, you see them decorated across the map in, in various hues. The yellow indicating where you have your tropical storm watches. Hurricane warning, though, where you have more of the purple color. And then in terms of the storm surge warnings and the storm surge watches, you see those also for parts of the northern Gulf Coast. Places like Gulfport into Bay St. Louis, Grand Isle, uh, New Orleans proper, Lake Pontchartrain, obviously, into Morgan City, Abbey, Lake Charles, even over towards the parts of the Texas coast. So, folks, any any place where you've got uh, water, it is going to be affected on the southern 
right along uh, parts of the, the coastline, obviously, with that wind causing it to pile up. But then you need to consider the heavy rainfall that comes with this, where you have the potential of, of not just several inches. You can see a bit more than that. But we're talking the potential of maybe eight, perhaps even 10 or so. But remember, forward progress can matter. If this thing slows down, you could see higher amounts. If it goes faster, you could see a bit less. You know, one place that has certainly been affected by tropical systems this season, it's Lake Charles, and if we can, let's go now to the mayor of Lake Charles, uh, Nick Hunter, and, and uh, Mayor Hunter, I got to tell you, it is in one of those things where this has been a local problem, but truly a national concern. A lot of people very, very concerned about Lake Charles. Where do things stand now in Lake Charles after Laura in terms of electricity, in terms of, of water, city services? Are they back to normal at this point? I would not say normal at all. Uh, we've made some strides, but this community is far from back to normal at the moment. And you mentioned national attention, and I, I got to tell you, I appreciate that because we need it at the moment. Uh, this this is a community that's going to help each other. Uh, we are good Louisiana citizens. We're also great American citizens, and this is an important American city. I, I drove right through your fair, your fine city, let's see, less than 24 hours after Leroy came through. And, and as I'm sure you, you obviously clearly remember, it was a world altered. It truly was. There was debris everywhere. Uh, you, just things obviously were, were you lumber all over the place. You had metal uh, turning into projectiles. Has a lot of that been cleaned up before you have this next approaching storm before Delta comes on shore? Have you, have you been able to secure some of those items? We have a, a debris contractor package uh, that's pre-approved even before a storm hits. Uh, they have come in and, and they've done a lot of work, but there's still a lot of debris out there on the streets. Uh, our debris contractor, who is a major one, has told us they have not seen this much debris since Hurricane Katrina. Uh, just the city of Lake Charles alone will fill up. Uh, if you looked at it uh, just as a visual, we will fill up and then some the Superdome with the amount of debris that we will uh, collect just from Hurricane Laura. Absolutely. We, we've got very little time. We just want to ask you very quickly, what is the plan now going forward? You, you're dealing with the aftermath of Laura. Now you've got another storm approaching. What is the game plan? The game plan is human safety. We want to keep our citizens safe and we're asking them to partner with us in doing that. We have a transportation plan to get people out of Lake Charles. We're enacting it again, and we're asking people to take advantage of that plan. Unbelievable. Mayor Nick Hunter, uh, what, what a year it has been. We certainly wish you and your fine community the very best as we go through the next several minutes, hours, and days. We've got a long way to go, no question about it. Uh, let's bring Stephanie back into the frame. And, and Stephanie, I know one component we often have to deal with with these land falling tropical systems is the severe aspect. There's the potential of strong, obviously, some heavy rainfall, yeah. but also tornadic activity not out of the question. No, it isn't. And so that's something that we'll be looking for when it's making landfall. And one of the other big issues when it's making landfall will be that water rise and that surge. And we have, um, of course, those surge warnings here really throughout the entire coast of Louisiana. We can actually show you some of the water uh, estimates. Now, this is worst case scenario. It's not saying that this is going to happen everywhere, but this is worst case scenario. Notice New Iberia, I and mean, it's really south of Highway 90 where you see that water rise. It could be as high as six, maybe nine feet in some places. And back over towards uh, Lake Charles, again, it's that I-90 corridor south of that where you're going to see the highest water rise. Now, as we look along the entire coast, I don't want to forget you in Mississippi. I don't want to forget you in Texas, also into Florida. You'll see the water come up. Obviously, it's going to be less dramatic the farther you are away from the center of this circulation, but we still want to make sure that you are aware and you are paying attention. There's coastal advisories. Those will continue to get posted as the storm nears the coast, and the storm looks like it will be getting to us, Hurricane Delta, as we head into our Friday night for a landfall. So today's the last day for everyone to prepare because tomorrow things will just continue to go downhill as the day progresses. We're going to take a quick break. We'll be back with more after. This is real. When your cameras roll. So this is something nobody can imagine. Our experts react. What do you do? Oh my gosh. Jaw dropping. Nope, nope, nope. All the way back home. It doesn't get better than this. Don't miss all new episodes of Weather Gone Viral. Sunday nights at 9. Here on the Weather Channel. Get your daily dose of everything weather. Wow. Boy, do we have a lot to talk about. Weather Today from the Weather Channel. New episodes every day. Only on Quibi.
And welcome back into the Weather Channel here. We are in southern Louisiana, Delcom, Louisiana, to be specific. And we're right on the Delcom Canal. You see all the shrimp boats behind me. Um, and this Delcom Canal goes right out and down to uh, Vermilion Bay and into the Gulf of Mexico. And so one of our biggest concerns here will be the water rise. They have seen significant water rise with past hurricanes. Rita devastated this area. And by the way, Rita made landfall on the border of Texas and Louisiana. It didn't even make landfall here. And they did see uh, water rise as well with Laura. Let's talk about the latest with this system. It is a category two, but it looks like over the next 24 hours it will strengthen perhaps into a category three. That makes it a major hurricane. And we already see some of those clouds that are coming north this morning. And some of those clouds are giving us a few spits of rain. But today is a day to prepare all along the Gulf Coast because the thing is, is we can't pinpoint exactly where that um, eye is going to make, come over and make landfall. But what we do know is that it will probably be between where I'm located and Lake Charles, Louisiana. So places like Jennings, Louisiana, you could have some of the worst winds associated with this and we still could lose power. New Iberia, we could lose power. Um, but when it comes to destructive winds, uh, the closer you are to that eye, the worse it's going to get. So we do have advisories posted, even tropical storm watches all the way uh, north and inland from where we are located. But we have those hurricane warnings again, Lake Charles, Lafayette, Alexandria, and points in between. Water rise, I think, will be our biggest issue where we are located. 7 to 11 feet is the forecast. And then, of course, that pushes up all the bayous and the winds for two days type of a scenario, but that still we can't downplay the fact if you're in the eye wall of a category two, you will get damaged. Sally, just a month ago, think of all the damage we got from Sally. That was a category two. This will be a formidable hurricane and do lots of damage, both from the wind and the surge step. You're exactly right. Don't be thrown off guard by the meteorology of it, that it might indeed weaken a little bit on final approach to landfall. But before that happens, we are seeing right now a very likely uh, sort of transition or a trend of strengthening right over the central Gulf of Mexico, where the water is very warm and deep and allowing this to happen. We're seeing a lot of thunderstorms wrapping up right near the center. The hurricane hunters are inside slicing and dicing their way and finding some pretty potent weather, especially in the northern Iowa where the wind speeds are now measured. It's somewhere over 100 miles per hour. Those would be the surface wind estimates uh, with a pressure likely somewhere in the low 960s. So we have a powerful hurricane that is probably right now in the process of getting a little stronger. And that is something to consider when we think about what will happen down the line. Now, those are the satellite pictures, and what you didn't see in those, and Cantori asked me this at the top of the hour, um, what is it like underneath? Well, there's all kinds of satellite uh, imagery that you can use to sort of see through the clouds, sort of, an, as Cantori used to say, an MRI look at the hurricane, and there it is. And it's got a, an eye here and an eye wall that... Um, has nearly, if not entirely, encircled the eye. In the last Vortex message that I saw, they said the eye was open to the south right there, uh, but that may have closed up. And when that happens, uh, you can see the pressures begin to fall and the winds uh, shortly thereafter begin to increase. So this may be a sign that uh, Delta is indeed strengthening with an appearance like this underneath those clouds. And this is a, a kind of an ominous sign in the near term. But still, we think uh, it will be a very significant hurricane all the way up to landfall, perhaps maybe losing a bit of strength on final approach. I'll talk about that a little bit later. We can hope for that, but it'll still bring destructive winds throughout parts of Louisiana and likely well inland beyond that, all the way through maybe even into northern Mississippi, right near where the center of circulation is on, uh, let's say, Saturday during the morning or mid-afternoon. Storm surge will be very significant, of course. We've talked a lot about that, where the uh, shore, uh, the wind-facing shores will be significantly inundated by the uh, surge and flooding and wave run-up and all the like that we see with landfalling tropical cyclones. But let's just say later on Friday, uh, Delta makes landfall very close to Lake Charles, unfortunately. We still could see some damaging winds in and around the Lake Charles area and extending some distance away from the center. Again, remember, with the uh, along into the east of that track is where the strongest winds are going to be. And the onshore wind, Alex, continues well into the weekend, though uh, Delta will be well inland by that time.
Hi, thanks, Dr. Postel. Well, for the sixth time this season, the state of Louisiana under the threat of a hurricane. Coming up, we're talking to Governor uh, John Bell Edwards about the historic season and what folks in Louisiana need to be doing now. Interest Trusted TV News Network. We've got a severe weather threat. Winds have been gusting the full force of this thing. The Weather Channel. Get your daily dose of everything weather. Wow. Boy, do we have a lot to talk about. Weather Today from the Weather Channel. New episodes every day, only on Quibi. And welcome back into the Weather Channel. We want to now bring in the governor of the state of Louisiana, Governor John Bell Edwards, who is joining us via Skype this morning. And Governor Edwards, thank you so much. I know you're very busy uh, preparing for the storm. Let's start with just overall uh, what has done and what is being done to prepare the state for this hurricane. Well, first of all, we were able to get I think we're unfortunately um, having some audio issues there with the governor. So we'll get back to him as uh, soon as we're able uh, to hear him and get that worked out. And uh, we'll talk more about Delta and what's happening with Delta when it comes ashore. So let's go to Reynolds now, who is in Baton Rouge, because, you know, Reynolds, we're here at the coast. You're in Baton Rouge, and I think that, you know, that's one of the reasons I wanted to talk to the governor about the entire state, because you have to be prepared whether you're at the coast or you're even a bit inland. You're absolutely right about that. The story does not begin or end right at the coastline at the water's edge. It is going to be a story that goes well inland. Well said, Stephanie. You're absolutely right. Uh, let's go ahead and give you some of the timing of what we can anticipate with the system because it will continue to rumble its way through. Once it is away from the warm waters of the Gulf of Mexico, uh, it will begin to die out. That's what happens with these tropical systems. But the thing is, you can't let your guard down because that's where you have some of your danger. It's still the danger of rising water from flooding. I mean, you have to think that every every stream, every creek, every every river, uh, every body is going to be compromised by the excess rainfall that we can expect. Now, again, you look at the time frame. We go into early Saturday morning, and this is still on shore, but look at that. Wind still forecast around 65 miles an hour. You've got soil out there that is saturated, and you've got the wind that just is, is very intense around 65 miles per hour. Something is going to give, and oftentimes it happens to be trees, and the trees, they hit power lines, and then you have the power outages. And I can tell you, you've got crews stationed all around the state at the ready for when the system comes through, and then, of course, the aftermath. But you follow the journey and it eventually moves up into the Tennessee Valleys and the Ohio Valleys as we go into Sunday and even into Monday. Still talking about the system rainfall. Let's start with the future radar and sure enough, this is the crystal ball, so to speak, and it does appear at this point that we are going to see the bulk of that rainfall make its way along parts of the I-10 corridor and then surge inland spots like Lake Charles. Hate to say it, but yes, they could have all kinds of problems again with some heavy rainfall that could be moving on through. In terms of the timing for Lake Charles, here is how it's laid out for you. The, the, you're going to feel the wind begin to pick up, I think, late night on Thursday and into Friday morning. But notice even into Saturday, we're talking winds in excess of 35 miles per hour. You see the gust, the real muscle of it, mainly into the afternoon on your Friday. But that, too, could linger into Friday evening and pass a midnight hour into early morning on Saturday. Rain to come. This is the sledgehammer, anywhere from 5 to 8. But I've said a gazillion times. I know you're sick of hearing it, but let me tell you, you could see some areas where you could get a bit more 10 inches of rainfall. Stephanie, not out of the question at all. Back to you, Steph. All right, uh, Reynolds, we're going to try to uh, test the uh, governor again and see if he can hear me and I can hear him. Uh, governor John Bell Edwards, of course, the governor of Louisiana. Uh, governor, are you able to hear me? Uh, Stephanie, I can hear you fine. And good morning, by the way. Good, uh, good morning to you as well. Great. So we're set here. So let's go back um, to what we were talking about before. What is being done right now for the state of Louisiana and what's the plan for, the, say, the next 24 hours? Well, first of all, we've got to continue to monitor the storm as it grows in size and as it strengthens and make sure we, we have a better idea of where it's going to make landfall. Uh, but as you know, uh, landfall right now is, is forecasted very, very close to where Laura made landfall. Uh, which is not good news for southwest Louisiana uh, because we haven't been able to repair all the infrastructure to the degree that we would want before we had another storm. Uh, and we already are sheltering more than 6,000 people from southwest Louisiana and hotel rooms across the state. We now have uh, Calcasieu Parish uh, where Lake Charles is. It's under a mandatory evacuation again. And so we're receiving those evacuees and putting them up in shelters and so forth. Uh, obviously, we have a lot of work to do today because today is the last full day that we have to prepare ourselves for the storm. Uh, we're, we're doing that. Uh, and, uh, you know, 
I'm thankful that the president signed yesterday a pre-landfall major disaster declaration uh, that allows us to, to benefit from direct federal assistance. It also allows us to continue to engage in non-congregant sheltering, putting people in hotel rooms uh, in advance of this storm and in the aftermath of this storm. Uh, you know, we're, we're doing this, Stephanie, as you well know, in a COVID environment, and that complicates all of this. Uh, but in Southwest Louisiana, for example, uh, we know that while the power has been restored to just about everybody outside of Cameron Parish, uh, we don't have the redundant transmission feeds into that area. So any wind is going to produce outages that will be uh, more widespread than, than would normally be the case and will probably take a little longer uh, to restore power. Um, and so that's just one of the issues that, we, that we're that we going to be facing uh, with, with this storm. We just hope she comes, uh, I, I say she is Delta now, but we hope it comes on, on land moves through very quickly. All right, uh, Governor Bell, uh, we, uh, Governor John uh, Bell Edwards, sorry about that. We certainly appreciate you uh, coming on and talking with us, and we'll check back with you and your office as the storm approaches. Now, of course, as uh, the governor mentioned, today is your last day for preparations, not only for the state, but also for you and your house. So we'll let you know what your biggest threats are coming up next. almost unbelievable this is real when your cameras roll this is something nobody can imagine our experts react what do you do oh my gosh jaw dropping nope 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 all the way back home it doesn't get better than this don't miss all new episodes of weather gone viral sunday nights at nine here on the weather channel get your daily dose of everything weather wow boy do we have a lot to talk about weather today from the weather channel new episodes every day only on quibi Hello, America. Welcome back to continued coverage here on the Weather Channel. Off in the distance, you can hear the trains here in Baton Rouge, but I'll tell you what, the big locomotive we're watching is out in the Gulf of Mexico, and it has a name. We're talking Hurricane Delta and what that could bring to our shores, infecting people not just along the shoreline, but eventually in places like the Tennessee and Ohio Valleys. Heavy rain is going to be the biggest problem. Speaking of heavy rainfall here in Baton Rouge, the worst they've ever had was back in 2016, in the month of August. If you live in the area, you may remember because it was truly an unforgettable event. Event. All told, by the time the rain event was over, they had, get this, 7.1 trillion gallons of water. And folks, that is the amount that could fill up Lake Pontchartrain nearly four times. It's more water than they had with Hurricane Katrina. So rain is going to be the biggest issue. Rising water, whether it's by surge, wise, whether it's by torrential rain showers, uh, is going to be a big problem. You have to think that in this part of the world, every stream, every creek, every river, every bayou will be affected by that rising water. But wind will also be a problem. Could cause quite a bit of tree damage with that. Well, power outages. Now let's make our way back over to Dr. Greg Postel to give us a better look at what we can expect with this monster in the Gulf. Back to you, Dr. Greg. Reynolds, the weather's going to get worse even as early as today across many areas in the northern Gulf Coast. Not far from where you are in Baton Rouge, there are some rain showers. Not all the stuff is reaching the ground, but when you look at the picture, you get the sense that, okay, something's out in the Gulf, and it's coming our way. This is what the uh, radar looks like now. Again, as I said, not all of these rain uh, echoes here are reaching the ground, but they will soon enough. And we're talking on the very distant periphery of, her of Hurricane Delta. You could argue uh, how close... Uh, uh, this is really to the circulation of Delta overall. There's other things going on here supporting some of the rain because center of Delta is over 400 miles away 
from southern Louisiana, way down here in the southern Gulf of Mexico, moving into an area that is, I think, going to be pretty supportive of further strengthening. And that is, I think, indeed, what the hurricane hunters are finding right now. Wind speeds over 100 miles per hour right there in that pass in the northern eye wall. And the pressure is somewhere uh, around 964-ish, plus or minus a few. So we're in the low 960s, winds slightly over 100 miles per hour, and both Are signs that this is strengthening and you can sort of see that when you look at the 85 gigahertz uh, satellite imagery kind of that sort of moves through the clouds and looks inside in the interior of Delta and you can see that there is the eye that is beginning to become more well developed and the uh, eye wall as well. Uh, remarkably though this eye wall according to the hurricane hunters or the eye is about 40 miles wide. So think about that uh, when we think about maybe landfall, that uh, the eye wall will be some distance out from the center, assuming it uh, preserves that shape going forward. But you can see that we will be dealing with a very powerful hurricane coming inland and likely carrying some damaging winds well through the state of Louisiana and into Mississippi during the first part of the weekend. Here's an, est an estimate of what the wind gusts might indeed look like with hurricane force wind gusts in red and tropical storm force wind gusts over 40 miles per hour in yellow, extending over 100 miles away from the center those tropical storm force wind gusts and we will continue to watch those march their way inland but you see the wind field contracting and that's typical with what happens I mean you will see that wind field contract to right around the center by the time this thing makes it into uh, northern Louisiana and into parts of Mississippi and uh, it will still right near the center carry that damaging wind threat through uh, Saturday most of the day so when does the real deal come in uh, as we see the core of Hurricane Delta really approach tomorrow morning the coast of Texas and Louisiana and may very well be making landfall tomorrow evening? And in that eye wall, expect wind gusts over 100 miles per hour and surrounding that, a very powerful onshore wind that will lead to very significant coastal flooding with storm surge extending well over 100 miles from where the center goes. And then Alex will be tracking this thing inland, carrying with it the severe weather potential and also some really gusty winds right near the center. Alex, back to you. All right, well, no doubt be watching as it continues to move inland. We always talk about how these uh, tropical systems, not just a coastal thing, but inland as well. And you'll see here as it moves its way through the weekend. I mean, still, as we get into central portions of Louisiana, still a pretty strong tropical storm by that point. And then continuing off towards the northeast from there again, taking with it some of those gusty winds and the rain. Rainfall forecast, this is the European model. And you can see the stripe of where the heaviest rain is expected from eastern Texas up into Arkansas, maybe even a bit of uh, south western Tennessee around the Memphis area three to five inches can't be ruled out but this is the hot zone five to eight maybe even eight to twelve inches in a few spots there in sections of Louisiana the GFS model similar footprint maybe a slight shift to the east but you get the general picture some very heavy rain going to be moving on through now the good news is this thing will be moving uh, even despite that, though, there still could be some very heavy rain that leads to some flash flooding. So here's our forecast going through Thursday. Looks like the bullseye here between Lake Charles and Alexandria, up 8 to 12 inches of rainfall possible there. Sliding up into southern portions of Arkansas, a good 3 to 5 inches will be possible for the folks there. So watching Delta move through the Gulf, eventually we'll see the turn towards the north and then eventually off towards the north and the east. Again, all anticipating uh, this thing to continue to strengthen a bit. And then as it approaches we should start to see it again, bringing some of that wind across the interior areas heading into Saturday morning. So a lot of areas feeling the impacts for the early part of the weekend. Well, make sure you stay tuned and stay with us here as we continue to track Hurricane Delta. We've got live team coverage and we're talking all day long across the Gulf Coast, bringing you the very latest on the storm. Hurricane Delta is currently expected, forecasted, to make landfall as a Category 3 major hurricane in Louisiana on Friday afternoon. That means that by Friday morning, conditions will be deteriorating rapidly. By the end of the day Thursday, you need to be where you intend to be as you ride out the storm, and you need to be postured however you need to be postured. So do all the work. Uh, that you need to do to fortify your position to get ready. Uh, make sure you have your supplies on hand. While the track uh, has shifted a little bit west, 
it is still true that the overwhelming majority of the coast of Louisiana remains in the cone. Yeah, I think so. Welcome into the Weather Channel, meteorologist Stephanie Abrams and um, Louisiana and Southern Louisiana. And we have been at uh, the marina all morning and, and showing you all the boats. What we wanted to do real quick is show you the neighborhood that we are now in. And we'll give you the nuts and bolts of the storm uh, as well. So let's start off with the very latest. I know everyone's very curious as what the storm is doing. The winds are at 100 miles an hour. It's a Category 2 hurricane. We're seeing some of the clouds. We've had clouds all morning, a few sprinkles of rain here into Southern Louisiana. And that's what the day is going to be. You really, this is your last day to prepare as we head into tomorrow is when we'll see much of the activity. And so get ready for that water to rise. Get ready for those winds. Get ready to lose power. This could be making landfall anywhere between, say, Lake Charles, Louisiana, and um, New Iberia. And that is where we will see the worst of the weather, up towards Jennings, Louisiana, for instance. You have to be careful there. Of course, we have those hurricane warnings all the way up to Alexandria, because as it moves inland, they don't wind down right away, and you could see damage too. I mean, I remember even after Sally driving all the way up from the Gulf Coast to I-10 in seeing damage. So remember that it's not just I know south of, you know, 90s where you see most of the flooding, but even points all the way inland, you're going to see issues with the trees down. And then, of course, we have that surge problem along the Louisiana coast and the rain that will be falling as well is problematic, too. And so that's why there are flood alerts posted from Louisiana to Arkansas over into Mississippi as well. So I want to show you the neighborhood we have uh, here and you see this is right along the canal and every home that you see is elevated. It's either on some sort of concrete pillars or on stilts. And this neighborhood floods all the time. They had huge flooding uh, during Rita and Laura. There also is flooding too. We have another home over here that not only is it on um, concrete stilt, but you can also see the ground has been elevated as well in order to try to protect uh, their home best as possible. So, Dr. Postel, I think in this area where we're located, uh, you know, say in and around New Iberia, the flooding is going to be one of the biggest issues for us. Obviously, power loss as well, uh, but the water rise will be uh, the biggest problem. Yeah, indeed it will, Steph. You're exactly right about that. Don't let your guard down. This is a very significant hurricane that is going to be making landfall tomorrow. The center likely in western Louisiana, but as you mentioned, the impacts uh, from the surge and the wind extending some great distance away from that, likely well over 100 miles. So this is what we're dealing with right now with Delta. And if you can see in right in there in the last frame, right about there, that may indeed be some of the uh, eyes showing up now on the satellite pictures which is something that we have not seen uh, lately. We've seen it using some other satellite data to look inside to tell us that there is an eye, maybe not completely uh, encircling the center, uh, the eye wall, but it's getting close. And we may indeed see starting, be starting to see this uh, subsidence warming in the interior here, uh, suggesting that the eye may pop out in the visible pictures fairly soon. What does that mean? Well, that means it's getting better organized and probably strengthening. And that is indeed expected by the National Hurricane Center by later on this evening or tomorrow morning being quite a bit stronger than it is now. Maybe 115 mile per hour hurricane, maybe more than that even. We have to be very careful of what happens uh, over the next 24 hours because it's moving over some very warm water that is quite capable of supporting a major hurricane. Now the water cools off a little bit farther to the north and the wind shear increases, which are a couple of reasons why we think the hurricane on the final approach will weaken a little bit, but it will still come on board as a ferocious hurricane and unfortunately inflict some damage from the wind and definitely from the water and carry that well inland as well. This will not only just be a coastal phenomenon as hurricane landfalls typically are, it will carry that damaging wind well inland as well. Hurricane forecast position by tomorrow morning somewhere around there. And the winds around it, the upper level winds, are telling us that there's really not much movement left uh, for this thing to take differently than what the hurricane center is track and the models are suggesting. There's a very tight clustering in the track guidance that suggests indeed that this will make landfall in southwestern Louisiana. It's important to know that. You don't disregard where the center is gonna go because that everything else you can back out from that. 
uh, but also include in that information the fact that the winds and the surge will be extending well outside of where that track goes and even outside of the cone, which is outlined here. The areas in yellow are where the tropical storm force wind gusts will likely be in excess of 40 miles per hour and the hurricane force wind gusts probably not so much by the time this makes as, uh, as far north as Alexandria, but we may see some 70 to 80 mile per hour wind gusts maybe in spots uh, across central Louisiana and that would be late Friday night and early Saturday morning. Here's, uh, I guess, maybe a fly in the ointment, some good news, I hope, that the water temperatures in the northern Gulf of Mexico are cooler than average, still warm enough to support a hurricane, no doubt about that, but the heat content maybe not as capable of supporting a major hurricane here than it is right now. So that may be one of the reasons why right now we're seeing strengthening, but the forecast does go forward and suggest that maybe, maybe in the final 12 hours prior to landfall, we will see a little bit of weakening. That is a uh, hope, but it is only a hope right now, and we have to wait and see how it all plays out. But the guidance is giving us some of that, Reynolds, to maybe uh, look forward to. Back to you. All right, Dr. Greg Postel always makes a complex understandable. Thank you so much. Good, sir. Uh, right now, if we take a look at radar, you'll notice we have some light to moderate showers out there. That is primarily the whisper. The roar becomes, well, that more prevalent later on, no doubt. We're talking for a moment about the winds and, and notice where you, you take a look at this graphic and it's it's kind of loud. It kind of screams out at you, doesn't it? Well, these no, these colors mean things. These this shows you the probability of the tropical storm force winds over the next five days. So we're talking about a pretty big time frame, but you see the bulk of it, that sledgehammer coming on shore uh, again southwestern Louisiana that's how it looks at the time being there could be change in the forecast but that's how it looks for now and notice when we see more of the numbers in terms of the gust forecast you see the core of that sledgehammer that buzzsaw making its way inland and you have to think about how southern Louisiana relatively flat at the coastal plain, but you have these tall trees and, and eventually something is going to give when we go minute after minute, hour after hour, day by day of these winds and those trees falling could cause widespread power outages. We certainly have seen that play out in Lake Charles, compliments of, of Hurricane Laura. Could we see this well end? Absolutely. Can't, nothing can be ruled off. And as we make our way into Saturday and Sunday, we see the winds beginning to fade in places like Louisiana, but still pose a threat for much of, of look at that Arkansas into Mississippi, Alabama, even into Tennessee, even Georgia, northern Georgia can see some of the strong winds. But uh, sure enough, in terms of the wind gust forecast, uh, some of the strongest on your Friday, uh, gosh, getting close to 90 miles per hour, if not stronger in spots like Lake Charles. What about the arrival? What are we going to hear the knock at the door? Well, if you take a look at this mustard yellow color, it indicates that by Friday morning, I say at 2 o'clock in the morning, the, the presence will be felt without question along the coast. You'd be able to step outside, you'll know that there's something coming. And sure enough, you roll forward into Friday within eight hours. Then as we go even forward in time, you see it moving into Arkansas and back into, into places like Mississippi. This wind does something. It causes water to really begin to pile up, and we refer to that as surge, and that is a, a very, very frightening and can be a deadly prospect, thinking about the surge and what it can do. For that, let's send back over to Stephanie to talk more about what we can expect in the days and hours to come. So. Yeah. Well, you know, we are right on the Delcom Canal. In this community that we're in, it floods very easily. You can hear that hammering. There's a woman behind us who is uh, trying to fortify her home, putting up some boards in case there is debris uh, flying, not to get the windows knocked out. Remember, tape is not the way to go. It's boards that you want to use. Also, candles are not the way to go. Uh, you want to use flashlights only. Candles lead to house fires. And by the way, the tape does nothing uh, really with, when debris comes. It just is hard to get off off once it uh, heats up. So this community is preparing here and of course it's not only for the wind but really for the water rise. We flood tremendously. We showed you all the homes. We're by the way going to go to yet another spot for our next live shot here. Uh, coming up in about 10 minutes, we'll show you another part of Delcom and how they are preparing. But that water is going to rise, and essentially, Highway 90 southbound is where you're going to get the worst water rise. That's where we're going to see it. So, you know, Franklin over towards New Iberia, uh, Abbeville, all those areas just south of 95 is where you will see the worst water rise. And even up towards Lake 10, uh, Lake 10, sorry, I 10 southbound, uh, you, it's going to be south of that area. So, how much surge is going to happen? Well, the potential is for 7 to 11 feet. And when you look at these surge maps, remember this is the absolute worst case scenario. Everyone won't see that, but there will be one area that will see that very high surge. And it's not only into Louisiana, Texas, Mississippi, Alabama, you're going to get a little water rise. 
So just keep that in mind in those flood prone areas especially uh, and you'll see more advisories put out as this comes closer with your flood warnings and then you have the inland flood warnings you have to worry about too and this is all going to be happening tomorrow. Friday is game day uh, for Hurricane Delta so today's the last day for those preparations and then tomorrow Conditions will just continue to go downhill as the day progresses with the worst of the weather coming in uh, later in the day into those overnight hours. That's the timing right now with this hurricane. So we'll continue to watch it as it rolls in and Reynolds. That's when we do now casting and people should really be tuned into the weather channel all day on Friday so we can show you even where you're going to get a tornado that's going to pop up and those little warnings happen. Yeah, you're right, Stephanie. I mean, vigilance is everything, and what better way to stay prepared than keeping watching the well, keep watching the Weather Channel? I mean, we'll guide you through it. Uh, right now, I'm coming to you live from Baton Rouge, Louisiana. We've got skies that are beginning to fill up with clouds. That's going to be pretty much the the bill of fare as we roll forward over the next several days. Also, you know, some congestion beginning to fill up not just in the skies but on the river right behind me. You see one barge that's making its way from south to north. There's another system playing copycat that's also sailing to the north, and that, of course, is Hurricane Delta. But it's bringing with it something very different. Different, the wind, but also quite a bit of rainfall. Let's tap into that. Let's talk about the rain for a moment and show you what we can anticipate. And we've taken out the paints and we've colored parts of Louisiana and back into Mississippi and parts of Arkansas with the flood alerts. Now, this is a, a place where there's going to be a great chance of, of that water coming down and piling up very quickly. The thing you have to remember, though, is if you're in one of these counties that are relatively close, maybe you're not shaded in green, that doesn't mean that you won't have flooding. You certainly could. These are just the areas where it tends to be most likely. Where it really is most likely, you'll notice that patch of yellow that pops up in a field of green across portions of, can you believe Lake Charles? I, I, I wish I could say that you had a better, better situation, but yes, it looks like it's quite likely there to have flash flooding from tomorrow through Saturday morning. So it's not going to be just a a one morning thing. It's going to last for, for quite a bit potentially. And the story continues away from the Gulf Coast and notice it marches its way into northern Louisiana, eventually into parts of Arkansas, Tennessee, uh, Mississippi, obviously, even into Alabama. Georgia may be affected by this. Also, places in the Tennessee Valley. In terms of the total rain forecast right now, the things that stand out to you, see a couple of the graphics here. A tongue of moisture makes its way on shore, but really does look like the core of trouble is going to be anywhere from, say, 9 to 7, but possibly higher could see maybe 10 or 11 would not be out of the question in terms of to totals and then sure enough the overall forecast shows where this is moving again keep it here on the weather channel because there may be changes to the forecast there there probably will be that does happen from time to time so uh, definitely know that that's going to be the issue but we mentioned how this is not just a problem for just the i-10 corridor of the gulf coast notice as we make our way from saturday morning into sunday we're still talking about the very real prospect and quite likelihood of more of the flash flooding that goes well into the Tennessee and Ohio valleys, even in portions like West Virginia, where orographic lift could certainly cause more of an enhancement of that rainfall potential, that flooding potential. OK, let's send it back in the studio. Alex is going to give us a look at what we know at this hour. Alex. All right. Thanks so much, Reynolds. Indeed, getting folks up to speed here with the headlines when it comes to Hurricane Delta right now and Delta expected to become a major hurricane again by tonight with maximum sustained winds of 115 miles per hour. Governors of Alabama, Mississippi and Louisiana have declared states of emergencies and Calcasieu Parish there in Louisiana is at the moment under a mandatory evacuation. So yeah, we're going to be watching this thing uh, get closer and closer again as we head through the day on Friday. Conditions really going to uh, move downhill for a number of areas here across the north central uh, portions of the Gulf Coast. There's the projected path and you can see uh, by Friday late in the, later in the day still looking at 105 mile per hour hurricane. So still a category two hurricane at that point, even as uh, we uh, think that it will be weakening a bit. Don't let that weakening word throw you off and, and let your guard down because that is still a formidable system coming on through. Even as it works its way across interior sections of uh, Louisiana in the central part of the, of the state, Saturday morning, we're still dealing with a tropical storm. And again, this is coming on from, on top of areas that have been impacted this season so far. I mean, Lake Charles is a spot where if you look at some of these areas and aerial footage, a lot of roofs with blue tarps still on them. Uh, so these areas don't need another system coming through, bringing in some gusty winds and, of course, some heavy rain. All right, let's take a look at New Orleans. This is uh, as we work our way through the rest of the day and into tonight. We'll actually start to notice a little bit more of some of those outer fringes beginning to move on through. And you can see as we get into Friday morning, more of that activity slides its way on through the area. Within each of those uh, showers and storms, 
gusty winds will continue out there for us as well as some of those heavy downpours and we can't rule out uh, some isolated tornadoes as always a risk when we're dealing with these tropical systems making their way on in. So New Orleans heading into Friday morning and through Saturday evening. That's when things are going to be uh, gusty with at least uh, in that tropical storm force range in terms of some of those wind gusts. Peaking, it looks like as we get into Friday evening with those wind gusts getting up over 40 miles per hour with about one to two inches of rainfall there for you in the city. Baton Rouge for you. It's again Friday into Saturday morning. That's when we're going to be looking at some of those impacts with the gusty winds. Peaking for you Friday later in the day, 55 mile an hour winds, maybe even greater than that. That is certainly a possibility. A little bit more rain in Baton Rouge than what we anticipate there in New Orleans. At least for now, about two to three inches will be possible. Well, coming up. Hurricane Delta won't just bring storm surge, destructive winds and heavy rainfall to parts of the Gulf Coast, but also the threat for tornadoes. More on the severe threat with the storm that is coming up next. And you can listen to our coverage here of Hurricane Delta on Sirius XM digital channel 721 straight through Saturday. season doesn't stop for a pandemic and neither do we from this point forward conditions will continue to deteriorate don't let COVID-19 take your eye off the tropics this year's threat is more complex and dangerous than ever before remain vigilant pay close attention to the weather channel no one can cover this historic hurricane season better than the weather channel get the information you need to stay safe every day storm safety in a pandemic all season long right here on the weather channel Hello America, welcome back to continued coverage here on the Weather Channel. It is all about Hurricane Delta. My name is meteorologist Reynolds Wolf and I'm coming to you from Baton Rouge, Louisiana, which is right along the shoulders of the Mississippi River. But uh, I got to tell you here in Mississippi, well rather uh, in, in Louisiana and Mississippi, you could say along the Gulf Coast, including Texas, even parts of Alabama and Florida, you always have to be prepared. But in Louisiana, it is not an endeavor to be prepared. It is not a job. It really is embedded in the DNA of the people here. They always keep a sharp eye on the Topics and always know with great respect of what can come from the waters of the Gulf of Mexico. Meteorologist Jim Cantori has got the story about how people here in Louisiana are preparing. Here's Jim. Uh, we boarded up um, a month later after we boarded up last month. Earl Chesson getting his store in Abbeville, Louisiana ready for Delta's arrival. Do you have any fatigue factor of this year just being... Oh my God, I mean, this is... I mean, to have them back to back within, a, I guess, within a month of port, that's, that, that's pretty rough. Gas for cars, as well as generators, yeah. in high demand with Delta revving up over yeah. the Gulf of Mexico. Long lines for two by fours and sheets of plywood in Broussard. Well, we're gonna board the, we're gonna board the windows up. We're gonna, uh, all the windows and any uh, doors with glazing on them. An earlier storm, Hurricane Laura, keeping Scott Haggard busy since late August. I have been going back and forth to Lake Trolls uh, since the Friday after the storm, uh, helping mitigate storm damage, gutting houses, helping friends out. Let's tie these and we'll put them in your car. Juan Robus masked up and filling up sandbags to guard his New Orleans home. <laughs> Under sea level, so, you know, you never know when it's going to hit. You know, it keeps coming and missing us. So hopefully we uh, will miss it again. Sheet metal going up over storefronts in Morgan City. This business already locked down. Across the bayous of central Louisiana, a foreboding sense that luck 
is about to run out. So far this year, we've been fortunate. Storms are hitting to the east, to the west. We have not taken a, a hit yet, uh, but we prepare for every one like it's coming right at us. You know, it's amazing. Over the years, you, you, you meet people when you go out and bat on during, during while you're covering the tropics, covering hurricanes, and it could be in Texas, it could be here in Louisiana, Mississippi, Alabama, uh, you name even Florida. And I, I often ask people who are in, in hurricane-prone country, why, why don't you just move? And, and to them, the answer always seems to be because home is home. And it is truly part of the way of life. It really is. And I'll tell you, uh, they're being tested once again. What a season it has been and what a season it still proves to be. And we still have a ways to go yet. But you take a look at the latest with Delta, and you've got, again, a Category 2 storm. Winds of 100 miles per hour. We've had some faint showers this morning. Earlier this morning, we did have some raindrops that came through. But really, the big show comes later on. And you'll notice that right now, you've got the Tropic Storm watches that are well inland. Uh, we've got Tropic Storm warnings. You see those shaded in red. But really, the purple, look at that. That's where you have your hurricane warnings. Surge, as Stephanie mentioned, earlier in the hour how that is a real problem how that water is piled up by the strong and seemingly constant wind that is going to cause all kinds of problems from Gulfport clear over to places like Lake Charles and every spot in between but notice when this system goes inland you're still dealing with more of the same more of the heavy rainfall ground that's already saturated will be compromised and tested once again the rain coming down piling up but there's so many other facets to this so many moving parts when it comes to a landfalling tropical system and one of them is the prospect of severe storms Storms. For that, let's send it over to Stephanie with the very yeah. latest of what we can expect as we roll forward. And we're going to talk about those tornadoes, but Reynolds, I want to show you and all of our viewers. We've been moving now. We're now at our third location in um, Delcom, Louisiana. This is a dock. By the way, I just talked to one of the boat owners where some of these docks are. They have floating docks, and so he said he wasn't going to move his boat. But we were just over. See all the shrimping boats? That's where we were. Uh, earlier this morning and then we drove around to one of the neighborhoods and we showed you how the homes are on stilts and you can still see some of those homes here that are uh, at this dock and now we're at a dock where there's more personal boats and not shrimping boats but the water is going to come up here and again that dock will float up everything will float up and so uh, they should be okay here but severe weather is something that we have to worry about. As this pulls ashore and those bands start coming around, you can see some of the bands are getting a little bit of light rain right now. And they'll be, of course, more intense as the storm makes its way on shore. It's the right front quadrant where we are located that is where you have the worst of the weather the wind, the threat of tornadoes. And so you have to look at the atmosphere as if it's a hamburger and all the different layers in the atmosphere. And so you have winds changing direction. There's also friction, right? The ocean, less friction than hitting land. And so all of that combined, you're going to have that right front quadrant where you could have the uh, best threat for severe weather. When does it all happen? Well, tomorrow is when things go downhill. And uh, what was he saying? Oh, he's just passing by saying, Hi to our crew. I just wanted to see what he was saying. Anyhow, the storm will be pulling ashore. Today, prepare. Tomorrow is game day for Delta. This fall, when your cameras roll, so this is something nobody can imagine. Our experts react. What do you do? Oh my gosh. Jaw dropping. Nope, nope, nope. All the way back home. It doesn't get better than this. Don't miss all new episodes of Weather Gone Viral, Sunday nights at 9, here on the Weather Channel. Get your daily dose of everything weather. Wow. Boy, do we have a lot to talk about. Weather Today from the Weather Channel. New episodes every day, only on Quibi. Welcome back into uh, the Weather Channel. I'm meteorologist Stephanie Abrams in Delcom, Louisiana. And if you're just joining us, maybe you're just waking up this morning, you want the very latest on Hurricane Delta. It is a Category 2 hurricane, and it's in the Gulf. And so what we anticipate is for this storm to gain strength over the next 24 hours and make landfall. When it makes landfall, because it's going to, it's stuck, it's going to hit the United States, it will be the first time in recorded history that we have had 10 landfalling hurricanes. The old record was 9 back in 1916. And we have had a few scattered showers blowing through, but obviously it'll get much worse tomorrow. Tomorrow is the day where the winds are going to pick up, the water is going to rise, so today is the day to do your preparations. Remember, you want to do wood and not tape. You want to do uh, flashlights and not candles. Candles start fires, and we've seen so many fires in these hurricanes that have started. The advisories are posted even inland, so remember, it's not just a coastal issue. As you move inland, Hurricane's not going to fall apart. So if you're in places like, let's say, Jennings, Louisiana, just north of Jennings, Louisiana, you could take the eye wall of this. And if it's a Cat 2, even if it's a Cat 1, you will get damage from that. You will lose power. 
So make sure any loose items from around your house, you take those down. Surge is obviously an issue too with this. And this is a Delcom Canal. It goes right out into the Gulf of Mexico. So we expect that push of water. Some people moving their boats, some people keeping their boats. But it's not only the water coming up, but the water coming down from the sky that is going to cause some flooding. So there are flood advisories already posted, and we'll see more of those as we could see at least six inches, if not more, of that rain coming down. And I just want to show you guys around here real quick. Uh, we were over by those shrimp boats earlier. If you missed, you stepped in one of the neighborhoods, and you can see all the homes are on stilts. You can see those there. Uh, and then this marina that we're in now is where there's more private boats opposed to the shrimp boats. And we just spoke to one of the gentlemen whose boats is on this dock. He's getting it ready down there. And I said, are you moving your boat? And Dr. Purcell, he said, nah, that's all right. This is a floating dock. And so the dock will come up. I don't know if you can see this, but it will roll up this pole. And so everything will go up together, right? The boat's attached to the dock and whatnot. So, you know, I don't know if some people might have never seen those if you don't live by the coast, but pretty cool. It has little rollers down here and it'll just roll right up the pole as the water comes up, which we're expecting it to do. Steph, thank you very much. I hope you all evacuate uh, if ordered to do so because the storm surge will be coming in and will be very significant and life-threatening in cases uh, as well as the destructive winds. We are watching even, even now some of the distant edges of Hurricane Delta beginning to show up on the radar. Now, this is not tied to the core of the circulation, really, but on the far edge with some other atmospheric processes ongoing in the northern Gulf of Mexico, we got some rain. No wind really to speak of. You could see that shot with Steph there. There was real, essentially calm conditions. Well, that's because the hurricane is still here, roughly 400 miles south of the Louisiana coastline. That would be the center of circulation. But uh, when you look inside, it's the hurricane hunters are doing a masterful job, of course, of slicing and dicing their way through Delta and giving us all the latest and greatest information. I put this box up here. My weather producer, Greg Diamond, helped me uh, put this together. But the idea is, is that these little dots here represent fixes from the reconnaissance, where the center is. And on their trips in and out of the center, they measure how fast the winds have been on their various passes. And so far, we're getting the maximum winds slightly over 100 miles per hour, pressure near the center around well, mid-high 960 millibar range. The eye shape is circular. The eye character is open to the southwest, and the eye diameter is huge at 41 miles. So there apparently is a big eye now beginning to show up on the satellite pictures, something that we haven't seen all morning long and something that we have seen using a different set of satellite pictures looking through the clouds and telling us, yeah, there is an eye in here. The hurricane hunters are definitely finding that. And I have a feeling that very soon we will be seeing the eye pop out on the visible and the infrared shots, the ones we traditionally see uh, with the hurricanes. Right now, we do expect uh, Delta probably to weaken a little bit on final approach, but it will still bring forward with it destructive winds and, of course, significant storm surge along the way and carry everything inland. That wind will be very significant moving northward across the region. Let me give you one forecast model from the European, the ECMWF model, to give you an idea of what to expect. Well, during the overnight hours tonight, we will see rain and wind begin to increase as the core of Delta gets very close. There would be the center right around this time, say 4 or 5 o'clock in the morning tomorrow. Expect a substantial east wind increase and the uh, rainfall get heavy. And then, of course, when landfall happens, Alex, expect wind gusts over 100 miles per hour in the eye wall. And, of course, a very strong onshore wind with significant coastal flooding as well. Back to you. All right, well, be sure to make you, uh, sure you stay with us here as we continue to track Hurricane Delta. We have live team coverage, and that's going to be all day long across portions of the Gulf Coast, bringing you the very latest on this storm. And you can listen our, to our coverage of Delta on Sirius XM Digital Channel 721. Or watching America's most trusted TV news network. We've got a severe weather threat. Winds have been gusting the full force of this thing. The Weather Channel. Get your daily dose of everything weather. Wow! Boy, do we have a lot to talk about. Weather Today from the Weather Channel. New episodes every day, only on Quibi. And welcome back to continued coverage here on the Weather Channel. I am meteorologist Reynolds Wolf coming from Baton Rouge, Louisiana. And right now we've got overcast skies. We had a few drizzles earlier, but 
The big changes, those are coming in the forecast and it's going to be experienced throughout much of the region. In fact, let's give you the timing on several cities beginning in Lake Charles. Remember Lake Charles, who spoke with the mayor earlier, they're still in the middle of cleanup. They're still trying to recover from what Hurricane Laura brought through there. Now Delta, here it comes on its heels. You see the time when the wind is going to pick up into Friday morning, even Saturday morning, winds in excess of 35 miles an hour. But the real power of it comes in with gusts over 80 miles per hour expected into Friday afternoon and into the evening hours. Rainfall could be anywhere from 5 to 8, but those numbers may be a bit on the conservative side, not out of the realm of possibility to see as much as 10 inches or more. Now when it comes to New Orleans, here's the story. You see the time frame when it comes to the wind, but again, the rainfall anywhere from 1 to 2, that's more than enough to cause cause problems in the Big Easy. And meanwhile, we finish up where we started, Baton Rouge, Louisiana. You see the winds there, rain still to come, two to three. By the way, as a side note, uh, LSU fans, please know the LSU Fighting Tigers have moved their game against Mizzou. That's right, they're playing Missouri up in Columbia, and that slate is expected for tomorrow. Also, on top of that, remember uh, the Raging Cajuns, their game with the Coastal Carolina, that has been postponed until the 14th uh, to 6 p.m. because of obviously the weather. Now let's make our way to Alex Wallace back in the studio with more Alex. All right, thanks so much, Reynolds. We'll check back with you now. Of course, as many along the Gulf Coast brace for impacts from Hurricane Delta, the Salvation Army is hard at work helping prepare for the storm. And, and joining us now by way of Skype is Emergency Disaster Services Director for the Salvation Army's Alabama, Louisiana, and Mississippi Division, uh, Terry Lightheart. Terry, thanks so much for joining us. Well, thank you for having me. So as we look ahead here, what preparations are, are you helping with ahead of Hurricane Delta? Is an area where we have also already had Hurricane Laura visit. So we are concerned about that location and making sure that we have mobile feeding units on standby. We have incident management teams that are also on standby. Area to know as they make their final preparations ahead of this storm. Well, actually, we, uh, as the Salvation Army partner with all of our uh, emergency management officials in every location um, in all three of these states, locally and on the state level, and so we make sure to listen to all of their advisories that they put out um, for ourselves and our preparations, and then also we would encourage all of our citizens as well. We do live in the communities where we serve, and specifically in the Lake Charles area, we have had damage to not only to our uh, Salvation Army facilities, but we continue to posture ourselves to serve those communities also. So we just want citizens to know to listen to their local emergency management officials, but also to know that the Salvation Army is prepared to have boots on the ground as soon as it's safe to do so. And of course, you guys do so much even uh, before system hits. But what services will the Salvation Army provide after a Delta makes that landfall? Uh, well, we actually right now have um, up to 31 mobile feeding units that are on standby to serve food and hydration and snacks. But also we offer emotional and spiritual care and anyone that can call right now because we know that there's been um, a lot of um, distress that's due with all of the storms that have recently come between Laura and Sally. We do have the emotional and spiritual care hotline that individuals can call, and that's 1-800-excuse uh, me, 1-844-HOPE. Um, I, I, I'm sorry, I've got that, <laughs> that um, number wrong, but I will um, um, get that later for you. I apologize. But we do have a hotline that is available for individuals to call, but we do provide emotional and spiritual care on the ground as well to individuals as we've had all of our um, officers, our ministers as well. So we do continue to provide those services on the ground. Thank you. Well, we certainly appreciate you talking with us. I know it was a busy, busy time. It's been a busy year. I'm sure you guys are ready to be done with this year, which has just been an incredible. Terry Lightheart, their Divisional Emergency Disaster Services Director for the Salvation Army. We certainly appreciate you joining us and certainly good luck dealing with this uh, next hurricane. All right, let's head back down towards uh, the coastal zones and check in with uh, Stephanie Abrams there. And Stephanie, Abr Stephanie, again, another system that we're unfortunately going to have to deal with in some of these same locations. Yes, and regardless of this is a Cat 3, Cat 2, Cat 1, the water is going to come up. This is the Delcom uh, Canal, and the water is goes right into the Gulf of Mexico, but unfortunately the Gulf of Mexico is going to push right up into this area here. So surge is going to be the issue. 7 to 11 feet is a worst-case scenario. That's where we could see some of the highest numbers. But again, that's not going to be everywhere. That's some places. But this area floods so much. Look at all the homes. They are elevated. They are on stilts. And that goes uh, for the community here. And we were over by the shrimp boats earlier. 
earlier, but I want to show you now. We have a floating dock. You see some uh, guys getting their boats ready. We asked them. They said they're going to keep them here, and the reason being is it's a floating dock. And if you've never seen one of these before, it's pretty cool. Of course, the boats are attached to the dock, and the dock has these wheels that spin, and so when the water rises, everything is going to rise together. So we will see a water rise here no matter what, and that's something that could be the worst here in Delcom, Louisiana, but wind will be an issue as well. Three words, warm strawberry jam. Three more words, perfect as is. Frozen bites taste like ice cream. It's science. When I started this commute, everyone said I was crazy. So 15 years ago, I got my first Subaru, and I did it anyway. My Outback always got me there. So when it was time, of course I got a new one. Because my kids still need me. And I need them. Welcome to the 2020 Subaru Outback. The most reliable Outback ever. Go where love takes you. Get 0% APR financing for 63 months on select new 2020 models. Now through November 2nd. If sweat is your body's natural way of cooling itself down, then condensation is a beer's natural way of saying, drink me. Hey, did you know in the 1800s ketchup was medicine? Did you know Cricket has nationwide 5G? Wow, that's surprising. But true. And now I also know that in the 19th century, you would have been the picture of health. Surprising, but true. Cricket has nationwide 5G. It takes a relentless attention to detail, a passion to protect people from the elements. But most of all, it takes a commitment to comfort in any conditions. At the Weather Channel, our gear means everything. And whatever the weather, you'll find us there proudly wearing Land's End. Because Land's End stands for quality in everything they make. So we know they can stand behind us. The official outfitter of the Weather Channel is Land's End. Let's get comfy everywhere. Wish you were here to see how bright the human spirit can shine, to see that no matter what nature does, people will do more. With one of the industry's largest catastrophe response teams, State Farm will always be among the first to arrive and the last to leave, to help show that human nature is greater than nature. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. These both have the same amount of potassium. Only one of them is always right for the picking. V8, the original plant-powered drink. Veg up. Have you ever wanted to learn a new language like French, Spanish, or Russian, but thought it would be too difficult and time-consuming? Then go to Babbel.com and try it for free. Babbel works because it's built around real life. It teaches you everyday practical conversations that you will actually use. In 15 minutes a day, you'll be on your way to speaking a new language in just a few weeks. Babbel uses a modern conversation-based technique that makes language engaging, fun, and memorable. It starts by teaching you words and phrases. Then, sentences gradually get more complex. Soon, you're practicing short conversations about real-life topics. Babbel is created by language experts who use the spaced repetition method to help you learn quickly and remember what you learned. With Babbel, you can speak a new language because language isn't just about learning new words. It's about learning a culture, a mindset, and a new point of view. Babbel, language for life. Go to babbel.com and try it for free today. It's almost unbelievable. This, as the water rises, obviously the boat's connected to the dock, the dock goes up. These, you know, can hit on to this uh, pole here and everything can move up together. But I do think that, uh, Dr. Postel, that water rise will be the biggest issue, but this area is ready for it. They are flood prone, they flood a lot. All the homes around this area are on stilts. Yeah, Steph, and uh, you know, be prepared for that water rise coming tomorrow as the approach of Delta will bring very significant life-threatening storm surge and, of course, destructive winds along the way. Right now, we are seeing a slow deterioration in the weather, although this is so far removed from where the center of Delta is. Uh, there's no wind here. Uh, to speak of, but there's some showers moving in uh, from time to time, and you'll see that throughout the day today. Wind won't be a factor today. It will begin to increase tonight and get very
very strong uh, later on tomorrow anywhere within 100 miles of the center. So this is where the center is right now, about 400 miles south of the Louisiana coast. And I want to zoom in on this because there's some recent trends that suggest that the eye is beginning to show up, at least on some of these pictures. That's what we think. When you look at this, we're seeing uh, some warming in the interior here, suggesting that there's some subsidence now that is organized and enough uh, to show the eye in the satellite pictures, in this type of satellite picture, which uh, would then, you would think, lead to some pressure falls in the interior with that warming and that descent, that subsidence uh, in the center of the eye. And that indeed may be what we're seeing with the most recent reconnaissance uh, mission telling us that the pressure is now down somewhere closer to 960 millibars. So that may be a sign that the pressure is coming down a little bit and we may eventually soon see the wind come up a little bit. Right now on this particular pass right through here, we are not seeing that increase in wind speed yet, but that's just one tiny little sample, tiny little slice of the overall circulation, of course, and it takes a little time sometimes for the wind to respond to the lower pressures. So what we'll be watching is a very strong hurricane tomorrow, closing in on the coast, bringing with it that destructive wind, not just to the coast, but well inland, and of course, a very destructive storm surge as well. To give you an idea of the timing of it all, this is a probably a pretty good one. This is the European model to show us that by very early tomorrow morning, do expect rain and wind to increase all along the coast of East Texas and most of Louisiana. Now the wind will gradually pick up and will become strong and destructive in that eye wall, likely gusts over 100 miles per hour, wherever it happens to line up, maybe close to Lake Charles, maybe just to the east, uh, but still very strong winds and of course a strong onshore wind with significant storm surge and flooding inundation that extends well to the east of where the center goes. And then we'll be watching Delta during the day on Saturday move northeastward very likely across parts of uh, northern Mississippi and right along the center and just to the east of it do expect some damaging winds still to continue Alex throughout the evening hours on Saturday with gusts way over 50 miles per hour still. Absolutely, uh, Dr. Postel. That's the thing that we'll be following. Things pushing inland. Dr. Postel mentioned that we'll still be dealing with some strong winds as it moves inland. This is Saturday early as it's located here somewhere across the central sections of Louisiana. Still a tropical storm at this point, a high-end tropical storm, and that no doubt could lead to problems, trees coming down, power outages as well, and then continuing down the road, moving its way across uh, the uh, Tennessee Valley. Spreading in that rain, the rainfall forecast here. This is the European model's depiction, and some heavy rain across East Texas, Louisiana, into Arkansas, a bit of Mississippi here and there as well. Some of the high totals getting into the 8 to 12 inch range, some of those red zones. Again, that's according to the European model. GFS model, maybe a slight shift east, but very similar footprint in terms of where some of that heavy rain is going to be from East Texas and across parts of the Mississippi River uh, Valley. 8 to 12 inches here. Our forecast calling for that zone as well to be where that uh, heavy rain sets up. Then moving down the road, this is now looking at Saturday into Sunday as the system moves north and eastbound. Possibility for flash flooding. That exists here for us. Memphis, you're in that area up towards Paducah and then sliding across the rest of the Ohio Valley as well. We'll have to keep an eye on you again as the system continues to move north and eventually curving towards the north and the east again through our weekend. I believe we have a, a new update here coming in. Dr. Postel, you've got the latest. Yeah, Alex, uh, a little bit of an uptick in the strength. This is the latest advisory on Delta 105 mile per hour category two pressure 968 moving northwest at 14 miles per hour. The track essentially is the same as it was before and let's go to that and show you exactly where the National Hurricane Center does indeed believe uh, the center of Delta will go somewhere inside of this cone perhaps Friday evening as a 105 mile per hour hurricane be prepared for destructive winds to move in during the afternoon tomorrow with storm surge on the way as well we'll be right back watching America's most trusted TV news network We've got a severe weather threat winds have been gusting the full force of this thing the weather channel
Welcome back to, your, to continued coverage here on the Weather Channel. I'm Reynolds Wolf, and we are following Hurricane Delta. And I'll tell you right now, in Baton Rouge, Louisiana, where we happen to be, we just have, well, right now, cloudy skies. We have had a few stray showers, but I can guarantee you the view that you have right now will be quite different by the time we get to tomorrow, and certainly as we get into Saturday. All compliments to the system. As we show you some of the nuts and bolts of this, this is as strengthened as we expected. Winds now at 105 miles per hour, still cruising its way to the north, and yes, we can expect trouble with this. Scattered showers, we've had a few of those this morning, but you'll notice much of the convection deep into the, the Gulf of Mexico as this thing chugs farther north, we're going to see conditions really begin to deteriorate. No question about it, but light to moderate showers really the name of the game for now. In terms of your watches and warnings, we've got plenty of those. Notice where you see that shade of purple. That's where you have your hurricane warnings. That includes areas like Lake Charles. You remember Lake Charles still recovering from what happened with Hurricane Laura. Notice as we make our way to New Orleans, we see it fluctuate a bit. It is a tropical storm warning there, but then farther north we see the the impacts being experienced in places like Natchez. Uh, look at that even into Macomb as tropical storm warnings or watches rather. Now in terms of the surge, that water is going to pile up complements the wind that are going to roar right on the surface of the Gulf of Mexico and as it does, it's going to affect every every stream, every river, every creek, every bayou that you have in much of Louisiana, portions of Mississippi and certainly into parts of Texas too. But the flash would watch the the excess moisture, well, it comes to a point where there really is no place for it to go. The ground becomes saturated, the water becomes instant runoff, and then, yep, that's where it really begins a real threat to, to life. And sure enough, we have those flash and watches that extend Dr. Postel into Louisiana, a little bit of Arkansas, but also into Mississippi. We may have more flooding problems as we go into the weekend. But now let's flood the zone with more information, more with Dr. Postel. Yeah, there's one good thing about this, though, Reynolds, is that it will be moving fairly quickly, so we're not going to see Delta stall out to across the region and continue that heavy rain for days. Uh, it will be moving fairly quickly, but as you mentioned, it will bring very heavy rain and flooding potential along the way. This is what it looks like on the satellite pictures, and if you can get close enough to your TV screen and see what I see, uh, it's pretty clear that an eye is now beginning to show up on the infrared satellite pictures which is what we've seen using other satellite data all morning long, that the eye was there. It was just obscured by some of the higher clouds. But even now, those appear to be evaporating a little bit as we're getting some subsidence right now in the interior as the convection around the eye wall begins to force that subsidence in the middle. What does that mean? That means we warm the interior, and as a response, the pressures at the surface begin to come down a little bit, and soon thereafter, the winds pick up. So seeing that eye is a sign that I think we are now starting to see this thing strengthen a little bit, and we will see that manifested in the pressure going down and the wind going up, I think, this afternoon, at least a little bit. Here's the new forecast now, the updated forecast from the Hurricane Center, showing you that by tomorrow morning still may well be a major hurricane, no doubt about that. Perhaps on a little bit of a weakening trend on long final approach, but still bringing in a potent hurricane all the way right up to land, very likely the center crossing the western Louisiana coast, and then inland from there, carrying with it those destructive winds hundreds of miles inland right near where the center of circulation is. So we can't let our guard down in northern Louisiana and Mississippi with heavy rain and some gusty winds during the day, especially on Saturday. Now, there's really not much room for this thing to take an entirely different track. The winds aloft tomorrow morning will be very clearly in a position to direct, I would say, uh, Delta toward the north or slightly east of due north toward, well, let's say southwestern Louisiana, much like this graphic suggests. Now, what I put on here was the center line from the Hurricane Center, which is a very important line, I might add, to keep track of, to know where their forecast for the center will likely be. But you can't just use that piece of information. It's very important in its own right. But you also have to include the impacts, which do extend out a great distance from the center. The areas here in yellow do expect tropical storm force wind gusts, and the area in red, hurricane force wind gusts over 75 miles per hour and likely over 100 miles per hour near the coast, near landfall. Some of those strong destructive winds will continue to move northeastern, but notice those circles contract as we move inland. But even Alexandria, Louisiana, we might see wind gusts on Saturday uh, over 75 miles per hour in spots. 
Here's one little good thing that we can hope for. The sea surface temperatures, the Gulf waters have been cooling lately and are now below average. And uh, as a response to lots of things, really, the ocean, heat, the ocean heat content in the far northern shelf waters here is less capable of supporting a major hurricane than where Delta is right now. It's over a very region of the Gulf of Mexico where the water is warm enough and deep enough to support a pretty high-end hurricane. That does change a little bit going forward, and we can hope that has an impact, Alex, as we move forward in this forecast that perhaps will lead to some weakening on final approach. I'm going to send it over to Reynolds now in Baton Rouge. And Reynolds, be prepared for some really bad weather moving in tomorrow your way. Oh, no doubt about it. You know, one of the things you talked about was the wind. The wind is clearly a problem, but so are the things that it happens to push around. It causes the water to pile up. Same time, it affects a lot of the trees that have been compromised, the root system, so the excess of water that you have in the ground itself. And then you think about the power lines, structural damage. There's so much, so many facets to follow here. But let's talk more about the wind. Now, the first thing you'll notice on the graphics we're about to share with you, you see those showers coming through. At our present location, we've actually felt a few raindrops here or there, but it's going to be, as Dr. Postel mentioned tomorrow where we see this metamorphosis in terms of conditions, things that are really going to change the wind picking up the rain coming down and then uh, again the trouble. Look at this, the probability tropical storm winds you see it featured here for the next five days. Clearly it is the Louisiana coast that as of right now is the biggest concern, but know that we could see just even the smallest deviation to the east or the west or even the north or the south could change the story, could alter the narrative. Now what we have for you as we go from five o'clock in the morning, we see the core of these strong winds begin to punch the way on shore and again that's where trouble really begins to pile up but then as we go into Sunday notice my goodness yeah this is still an issue for you even in spots like Memphis Tupelo even in Jackson Mississippi Little Rock Arkansas for heaven's sakes you've got gusts there over 25 miles an hour but also notice on the right center of this you have the core of more of that muscle places like Huntsville even North Georgia could be affected by some strong winds high elevation you could have the enhancement of that so certainly problems there now the, the let's talk about when to be ready the the travel storm force winds we've got this this graph that is a kind of a mustard yellow that shows you that as you go into Friday at 2 o'clock in the morning, and that's when you're going to have Delta really knocking on the door right along the coastline. But then, obviously, it's not going to drop anchor, at least according to our forecast for now. It's going to bring that trouble more inland. Now, one of the things we talked about what this wind can do, what it can do, what it likely will do, it's caused the water to pile up. We refer to that process as storm surge. Let's go to Alex now with what we can anticipate. All right, thanks so much, Reynolds. Indeed, that is no doubt one of the concerns, one of the many concerns that we have when it comes to uh, Hurricane Delta. Now, for the sixth time this hurricane season, people in Louisiana evacuating the state's barrier islands and moving boats to safety. But the increased threat of storms is really taking its toll on crab fishermen. Every time Louisiana is threatened by a hurricane, well, they have to remove all the crab traps from the water and wait for the storm to pass before putting them back. It's a process that costs the fishermen thousands of dollars. So yeah, this is definitely a, a bad situation yet again having to deal with that, uh, dealing with these storm surge warnings that are in place from uh, just across southeastern parts of Texas and then across basically all of southern Louisiana, curving around and into the southern portions of Mississippi. So all along this zone, that storm surge, that water rise is no doubt a, a big concern. Now it's going to be realized in terms of the height of the water rise in different locations. Let's get in a little bit closer here and take a look at the storm surge flooding forecast. There's the New Orleans area and it looks like like as you work your way towards that northwestern portion of Lake Pontchartrain, there could be a few areas in that kind of one to three foot range, uh, certainly a possibility for us uh, there, but we think we'll see higher water as you head farther through the farther to the south and the west. These are some of the areas south of Morgan City. There is 90, Route 90, essentially is right along and south of that that we see some of the higher totals coming in. The orange zones, six to nine feet in a few areas there, and you see a few red specks showing up here south of New Iberia, nine feet or even more. Now, again, this is looking at the sort of reasonable worst case scenario of what could happen here. So this is what you want to prepare for. It doesn't mean that everyone will see those values, but somewhere in those locations, that possibility certainly exists. If everything comes together right, you get that highest a surge of water and push of water coinciding with the high tide, we could see that taking place. So here's the big overview here for us. And again, all along this zone, water rise is expected. Even west of the track, there could be water rise one to three feet. Galveston included in that, but the higher totals, seven to 11, somewhere in that zone, that a possibility of that being realized is very, very real. Well, storm surge, it no doubt can be one of the most dangerous and deadly aspects of a hurricane. Our Jen Carfagno explains why that is and pinpoints which cities need to be on alert. 
Storm surge warnings are up for Hurricane Delta, and they run from Sabine Pass in Texas all the way to Ocean Springs in Mississippi. Here, this is very low-lying coastline here, very susceptible to storm surge, and the numbers could be quite significant. So let's look at some of the details. This is the most reasonable estimate for worst-case scenario when it comes to storm surge inundation. The areas that you see here in yellow, this is up to six feet. Orange up to nine feet. And in the ERAF area, a lot of homes could be impacted by at least up to six feet of storm surge. Of course, near the waterways, it gets worse, and that's where you could see up to nine feet of storm surge inundation. Go over to Delcom, where right along the Delcom Canal, we are so close to the water here that we do have that potential for nine feet of water, even into communities, even into homes right here along the waterway. And then just inland from that, you're still going to see that potential for up to six feet. So what does that look like? What kind of impacts are we talking about? Well, at three feet of storm surge here, that's covering the roadways. You don't want to drive in that situation. But once we start getting a bit higher, think about this, getting up to six feet, that's over my head. Six feet of water could float your vehicle, and anything moving in that water is going to be moving at a force, right, that that water uh, is, is pushing it along with. And then when we get to nine feet, that's over well over all of our heads. That is forcing you to get up to the second floor of your home for safety. This is why evacuations are underway. If you are under evacuation orders, make sure you pay attention to local officials and heed those orders. Stay safe with Hurricane Delta. Hey, when it comes to these systems, water is no doubt uh, the biggest, biggest concern, whether it's coming from 